Peter Shu. What's going on? Welcome, my brother. Good. Good to see you again. Yeah, man. It's good to see you, bro. It's been it's been a minute since we've sat down. Um, I know a lot has happened um in between the last time we sat down in this kind of situation uh for my podcast, Dope and Game. And um, you know, talked about uh all of the things that you were uh endeavoring into um at that at that point when we spoke. Um for those who don't know, uh, you are a South Bronx native. Yes. And um, you were born to an African-American mother and a Chinese father. Um, you're the youngest of three and the only son. Um, you grew up in the, in the 70s, right? So um, South Bronx in the 70s. Um, mm-hmm. Give us, you know, I always tell people that character, you know, your environment is a character, right? It's a character in your story. You know, your environment is comprised of the people who, you know, had influence, whether it was direct influence or, you know, just, uh, you know, you being around and being able to see certain things. What were the kinds of things that uh, a teenage Peter Shu uh, saw in the uh, in the 70s? Well, you know. In the South Bronx. Hunts Point, in that area was probably... One of the roughest in the Bronx because they had everything over there. You couldn't be soft. You got to be, you know, tough. Are they going to make you tough? Life over there would make you tough. You know, even, I mean. What what kind of things, like you said that it, this, it was rough. You and had everything over tough. there. What, what was happening? What was, what was you seeing as a teenager in this environment? I mean, you had the drugs in all the areas. You had the gangs. You had the stick-up kids. You had the prostitutes. You had the... um. Uh, what else? It's, it's so many things. We even had stray dogs. Dogs <laughs> would attack you coming out. You know, in groups. You used to try to yeah, try to attack your 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 mother and stuff. You got run outside with the bat and and hit them off. You know, it's you had the drug addicts. You know, it was it's just you had everybody trying to make a name for themselves. So it was it, a lot of people I see. You know, we was growing up with got killed in that area if they did, couldn't hold their own. So you know. At 13, I had to pick up a gun, so. What was, do you remember the the motivation when you first picked up a joint? Like, what was the thing that made you say, man, I got I to gotta arm up, man? Well, just the vibe and the value, the surroundings. You know, you, you see things happening all the time. You, you know, prostitutes getting killed, you know. I mean, it was, it was just a rough heavy at the time in, in the drug game. So, you know, the drugs is in everybody's neighborhood. So you may, you got to be careful. You could walk out side and somebody could be shooting at somebody else and hit, your, hit you, your family member, whatever. So it was growing up, you know, we had to really be on point. And then um, I just felt the gun was needed because of my surroundings and what's going on and protecting myself because I was young and I was, you know, most of the guys, everybody was older than me and that I messed with, and I was small, skinny, you know. So you, even when I get into a fight, these dudes was three, four years older than me, so chance of me winning was slim. But when I put it, when I had that 38 long, the fight stopped because they know I'm going to put two in them. So that's what it is. That's right. So you, at that age, during that period, dealing with those circumstances, how did you manage in terms of education and so forth? Were you going to school? Mm, yeah, but you know, my thing was wanted to be around. I was in love with basketball at that time, so I was playing ball constantly, cutting classes, going to play ball. And um, you know, my parents used to have to come to the school, and I'd be outside playing basketball while they're in the principal's office. So you know, I get three ass whippings. I get one. From my mo- grandmother, one from my mother, and then when my father come home, I get that's the, the one that he wake me out my sleeping with me. So I got those two. So, but it's just I couldn't. It was me. I couldn't stop. I, you know, I just wanted to hang out. I didn't school. You know, I passed the grades and stuff like that. But I just used to try to break out, come back, take my test. You know, I was pretty smart, so I passed the, the classes. But I was just me being in. In, in school for eight eight periods, uh, wasn't my thing. You um, you finished high school, but yes. you got kicked out of a lot of them. Though. I got kicked out of all the schools. 
Yeah, they kept kicking me out because I kept getting in trouble and stuff. So, you know. You got cats get kicked out of one school, bro. That'd be that. Never go back yeah, and that'd be that. How was it that you ended up going back over and over again, even though you got I just, out? you know, I, school wasn't my thing. I mean, I, I, I want to hang out. So, and then, you know, sometimes we go on on stick-up missions when we go on stick-up. Um, when did that start? So at 13, you started carrying the Probably about 15. Joint. We were sticking up on um, other other um, private schools when they had their candy sales and they bringing in their money. So we start, we used to run up there and involve them and, and, and break out, you know. And it was us. I mean, that's what we was doing. That's, that's our first life to crime. And then, I, you know, I was selling weed back in the day, loose joints. So... To us, that was major. If you sell 100, 200 joints a day in school, yeah. you don't, you don't did good. You I know mean, what? What? What year are we talking about now? Doing that, probably seventeen. All right. So you 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 talking about like maybe seventy seven, something like that. Seventy six. Yeah. Three hundred dollars in nineteen seventy six was like the equivalent to maybe. Hmm, a thousand dollars a day. So what you could do with three hundred dollars back then, you could do it. Probably cost you a thousand dollars. Yeah, it's, it's your age, you know. Your age. And you ain't got no overhead. You yeah. ain't got no children to pay for. You don't have no rent to pay. So what were you doing with all this money, man? Tricking, you know. What was tricking? What, what, Taking what was, girls what, what, to the what movies. What tricking at that point? See, you know, I was always considered like a Robin Hood, so I always would make sure that the young kids in the neighborhood was all right. So I give them money to buy sneakers or whatever, 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 because that's, that's me. I've always been a godly child when it comes to that. Always want to take care of the people around me. I never was greedy and want all the money. So that was one thing. We was, you know, then trying to get the bad girls, taking them to the movies, or, you know, just like they do now when you get older, but you spend more money now, they're expensive. Right. But before we spend a couple of dollars, you know, we, we all right. And then um, we expanded, me and my man, Jamal, we expanded. And we was doing um, selling weed down in 14th Street in the park. I think it's Tompkins Park. I forgot the name of the mm-hmm. park. But we used to sell weed down there. Boom, boom, boom. So we we killing them at night. And the older dudes used to look at us and like, oh, look at these young dudes, you know. And they was cool with us. We could do what we want. Mm-hmm. But we started making too much money. Them niggas chased us out of there. So they they robbed my man. And, and we couldn't. We they told us when we come back down there, they're going to kill us. So. We ain't need to be, you know, told twice. We ain't go back down there. Right. <laughs> we was doing good down there. We was making about a G's of 1500 down there a night. What? So we was killing them, yeah. In, in the 70s? Just selling weed. Just selling weed. I mean, I knew a lot of cats that was doing, we you know, selling. that was doing and, dollar and joints. And the weed they got now. Then we talk about that, you know, I ain't going to say BS weed, but, you know, yeah, regular yeah, weed. Know. No chemicals Acapulco or nothing. Acapulco gold. Acapulco gold. You know what I mean? With a, with, with a bunch of seeds in it, and it sounded like a, a, Sell the a seeds too. when you would shake the bag, <laughs> yeah. that, that manila bag. Yeah, you maraca. put them seeds in them little, little envelope bags, yeah. <laughs> so we was doing that, and we just having fun. So, you know, me and my man, we, you know, we did everything together when we was young, all, all type of um, crime, criminal activity that we were supposed to do. So, you know. And I even used to rob the prostitutes. So I used to rob the prostitutes in Hunts Point. And the pimps would chase us. But they got to go to the grass and get the guns. So we gone by then. So one day they came to 48 Park. We was playing ball. They was like, we know it. it's a couple of y'all that we talking to now is the ones robbing our, our hookers. And we find out we're going to kill you. You know, once you, once you, you on me like that, I back up. Because I was like, yo, I don't want to die for stupid stuff, and I don't want them to be looking for me every day. So even though I got a joint, still the first quick draw, get them on. They might catch me off guard, you know, just like they do in the movies. Mm-hmm. So I said, nah, I ain't messing with that no more. So I stopped that. But I was just, I was terrorizing them too. So even though this is still all in your teens, yeah, like people didn't know who I, they didn't know, yeah, they didn't know selling, who I was selling hundreds. Sometimes thousands of dollars worth of weed yeah. a, a, every fucking night. You we was doing I mean? all this when we was young. And yeah. we was getting high. 
Oh, and don't go to the times that when I saw Slip and Coke. We're going to go to that time. Oh, not, yeah. We, we definitely got to, you know, we working not, our, we work know, our way towards that. Yeah, the Coke times was really had me. You know, I was robbing everything then when we when we was um, Slip and Coke. You know, I know you know about that. Yes. And we used to be in a fever all the time. Yes. That was where all the stick-up kids meet up. Yes, in the back room. In the back room, remember that? So I'd be, I'd be skied out of my mind. I to serve everybody back I'd be, be skied out of my mind. Now, mind you, I'm still in my teens. Mm-hmm. Me too. You know, probably 18, 19, whatever. I don't know if it's the exact year, but we, we, we in there with the big ballers. And they, you know, I, I knew a lot of the, the, the main guys, and they, they all had love for me. Because, you know, I'm, even though I'm doing what I'm doing, they know I'm, I'm, I'm a real brother. And I just don't. Go at nobody that don't deserve it. So I'm in there doing me, doing me, getting high. We go on to parties. They got coke in the ashtrays. And you'd be like, you, people would have been amazed at this back in the day. They got coke in the ashtrays. Yep. And and then, you know, one time I went to um, Peter Masanto's house back in the day. And he had a, 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 I think it was a New Year's Eve party or whatever. But he had a DJ out the closet. It was, it was some fly shit. Pete was one of my my guys that I, I really cared for yeah, back man. in the day. Monsanto, man. Shout out to him and Fast Stevie. Yeah, so word up. We snipping, we snipping. And they had set me up so I could get this Chinese looking broad I wanted. Right. So, but I'm high as so hell. This Coke was the best Coke I ever had when I was sniffing, untouched. And I done sniffed, and I sniffed a lot of Coke back in the day. So I Ditto. go on, I go into the um the kitchen to get some water, but I'm I'm high as a motherfucker. So I said, I see, I'm looking and I see something behind the dish rack, right? So it's a roach. But I saw a roach like this big. So it's like, I'm like, I pulled my 38 out. So I'm 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 pointing that waiting for to come from behind the, the, the dish rack. So my cousin Tammy comes in there and he's like, yo, what are you, what's wrong with you? I was like, yo, chill, Terry. I said, there's a there's a big gigantic roach behind the roach coin. So he knew I was messed up. He said, yo, he said, put the, he said, yo, put the gun down. He said, I said, yo, I'm telling you this. He said, just put the gun down, man. I said, so I eased the gun down. He slapped me in my head. Yo, what's wrong with you, man? So everybody ran in the in the kitchen. They was like, yo, what's up? Because I was the youngest one. So they was like, yo. Peter was like, yo, take him home, man, because he's messed up. I said, I ain't going home. I ain't going home because I was still at my mother's house. I said, I ain't going home like this. So that's how I'd taken one of the stash houses. So they took me one of the stash houses. But I forgot the shower you take that opens up your pores more. I think it was a hot shower opens it up more. So Tevi told me, go take a shower. So I jump in the shower. He said, I'm going back to the party. So I said, yo, you going to leave me? He said, "He said, man, I got a girl. You know, he's trying to get. So I, I jump in the shower. Man, my heart started beating like 100 miles an hour. I, I, I beat them back to come back and get me because... I can. I, I felt like I was gonna die. <laughs> so he came back, had to be, babysit me to my high. Went down. That shit went down like six, seven hours later. So he missed the party. He was mad at me. So. That might have been speed, son. Yo, they might have put. That I don't know what it was speed, son. because sometimes they was doing that. They was putting I, I know, speed in that. I, I know. I, you know. I mean, we all came that shit across. Used to piss we me all off. came across that. that back was, but I I've never so had high. an episode though. Yo, I had I've that. been around people who had episodes. I had another episode. It sounds funny when you're telling it, but it's not. It wasn't funny when it happened. But here's the other episode. You know about this spot, Red Parrot. Of course. So, you know, we still young. So we in the Red Parrot, and we just came off because, you know, all of us were stick-up kids robbed in different places. So we put our money together, go get the coat, get new outfits, get the limos. Boom, we down there. So it was about 12 of us, 13 of us, of my whole little mob. They was like, Look at the girl, because you know the girls is older than us. We younger, so it's right. like, look at the girls in here. We got on the the, the cheap gold dip, da, I mean, the diamonds used to wear back in the day with the mm-hmm. little the, the, burgundy stone the, in it. The, 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 the flat, the flat ones that yeah. you, could, you could ball up. Yeah, you could the, ball up like a piece of aluminum foil. Yeah, those, yeah, yeah, those on with the chain. And so we in there. So, so dudes is like, yo, look at all these girls in here. I was like, yeah, yeah. There's like, yo, we gonna we gonna get we gonna come off tonight. I said, yeah, yeah. They was like. Yo, let's go get all the champagne. I said, yeah. I said, I just need y'all to do one thing. They said, what? I said, don't leave me, man. I can't move my legs. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even move. So this, 
<laughs> they was out to babysit me, man. They was, they was just mad. They was like, yo, this nigga's shoe, man. So they, you know, sat me down. They got a girl come over there and out with me, but I couldn't move, man. I was so I was so coked up because I was getting that good coke. And see, the way I was sniffing, I wasn't sniffing like these, you know, um, bougie people. I take the dirt and throw it in my nose, you know, snuff it and throw it in like that. So Who the hell told was, you to do that? I was high, you know, I mean... And then I see Scarface and Tony Montana do it in the movie. I was like, oh, yeah, this is how you're supposed to do it. No, do the lines. Oh, man. But I was. You look, you ain't bust your heart. Yo. One thing I did, though, I cleaned my nose out every time I got high. A lot of people wasn't doing that, and that's how they was getting them holes in the nose. That's right. Stuff. I always washed my nose out every time yeah, I cut this caking up in there. Yeah, every time yep. I got high. So we was, we was having fun, man. This The stick up thing. Yeah. Because obviously you transitioned. You, uh, eventually transitioned into the narcotic game, but you were a dedicated stick up dude. Yeah, when we was growing up, right? Me and my little and mom. So, what was the transition? Um, tell me about the war crew. Well, see, the whole thing is right. I lost a lot of people in in the, in the stick up game. Either they got died or went to jail for a long time. So, um, shout out to all my brothers, you know. From that area, but the whole thing is, it's crazy. I stopped coke on my own. Yeah, me too. So nobody had to tell me. I just woke up one day and said, I'm not getting high no more. Yeah, me too. I, that's always been Same me. Thing. But my crew never stopped. They wouldn't stop. Same so, thing. you know, that's why I really needed that extra money because through the coke. So I started trying to fade out of things and, and then the shootouts with these, they caught one of my people. And um, sh- shot him in his head. They threw one of my people in the East River. They who, um, who who like like what opposition? No, other stick up our crews? team. I stick up crew. Oh, who was coming at us? Yeah, who was coming at y'all? The drug dealers. We was robbing all of them. Do you know? In the in the in the, in the BX, everywhere. So y'all was going to like Harlem, everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. On Brooklyn, all you got to do is give me. A, all you had to do is give me a call and say he got it. If he got it, we gonna get it. So that's how it, how it was. If they had the coke in the house and the money, we we're going to get it. So we just so y'all was citywide with it. We was built like that, and then you know we we was robbing the legal places too. We didn't care, if, you know. What kind of legal businesses were y'all robbing? I mean, because like, there was a lot of cash at, business around back then. Downtown in this area, electronic stores mm-hmm. and you know, you know um, clothing stores, the 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 warehouses and stuff. We was just we was just going in anywhere we could, you know, anywhere that we smell some money. We was going to get it. So, you know, I started losing some people, and some of them was close to me, you know, and the icing on the cake was um, when they got my man that was like my twin, and he was black and Japanese, and I'm black and Chinese. So at first we didn't like each other, but then we started liking each other because— um, (laughs) Some some kind of— Ethnic. Yeah, because you know the girls, the girls, same girls wanted him, the same girls wanted me, because they wanted me all my life. But me and him was, you know, he's a, we had a mutual friend, so he kept, yo, 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 gotta hang out with each other, yo, yo, would like want to be brothers, you know, because he was doing the same thing I was doing. But I said, oh, he was nah. a stick up kid too. Yeah, I said I ain't messing with. So he was a stick up kid when you met him. Yeah, we both okay. were stick up kids. Okay, but he That's was hanging out with my man because my man. My man's a coke head, coke, coke, coke. So he he with everybody that got that coke. So they sniffing, sniffing, sniffing all the time. But I, you know, when I met him, you know, you know what it was though. A couple of girls were saying that he said some, you know, and I was going for that. He he, he says she says stuff. So I didn't talk to him in person. So when I finally got to meet him, I asked him. I said, Yo, why you be telling these girls, you know, shit to downgrade me so you could get you could, you you could get him? He's like, he said he never said it. So I took his word, and then we started hanging out. It was just, it, it's just fun times, and you know, you wish yeah. you could do some of them different, but hey, hell, we had fun, so. I mean, shit, had, had you done anything differently, you might not be here now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, it's I a mean, blessing. We were young people making some very serious choices and not really, I mean, you said several times since you've been sitting there, Having fun, just want to have fun, have fun, fun, fun. That was mostly the motivation because as much of the of behavior was adult behavior, we were still children engaging in it and still motivated by the things that kids are motivated by, yeah, which is stopped, entertaining once ourselves. Once I stopped getting high, I didn't want to rob no more. I just felt that, you know, it wasn't necessary for me to do that. So I was trying to do the right thing. 
get a job. So, but, you know? so what was up with the uh, in, NYPD putting together the war crew? To come after us? You talking yeah. about the police? Well, yeah. you know, we was doing so much damage, so they wanted us. You know, I ended up, they finally ended up getting me, but I was set the up. The war crew? Is that what they was calling them, the war crew? Uh, according, according to, I'm assuming, uh, your book. I don't know if I said war crew. I, I, I'm not. I, I, it's been so long since I voted, but there was a there was a there was a task force that they had to get us to get not only us, all the, the stick up kids. Stick up kids are all, all over the city. Yeah, so they you know so they're going after tutting them over in my Brooklyn. My cousin might have said war crew in there. He might have put war crew right. in there. But they 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 got us. You know they tried to kill us in, in Apollo too. You know. Oh yeah, what dealers. happened at the Apollo? I mean, they tried to get us because you know they was on to us and um. Some people we knew, some of the big drug dealers, they was on to us, so they tried to get us. They put a hit on us, and, you know, they, they, they got you a say few. say they, who put the hit? The big drug dealers. Oh, okay, because so, of the sticking, the sticking yeah, up. So I don't want to say their names because no, we, that's, be, that's, that's we retaliated too, and, you know, it got a little messy. Yeah, that's but it. I don't like never to say names because, you know, some things, some cases might still be unsolved. So That's right. But they tried to knock us off, and... Just like you know, you know from back in the day, we was never taking pictures and none of that. Right. That that was really Big D's rule too, because you know when I came home, Big D was in power, so he put me back on. So I, I shout out to our brother. Yeah, that's Big my D. that's my brother. That's you right. Know? Godson, my godfather, my son too, who's here today, my son Peter. But he he had these things already in place. So when I came home, now I, you know I never worked for nobody. I'm my own man, but. He got crazy love for me. So know? wait now. So yeah, when you introduce an element like Big D, for those who don't know, Big D is an uh, iconic figure from uh, from Queens. Queens. And uh, he's a well-known street guy, uh, did a lot of time in prison, initially went to prison uh, for bank robbery and shit like yeah, that. Big but he got, he got really, you know, um, heavy in the street game when he, when he came home. He had a... You know, we used to talk about this back in the days. He, because I, you know, I used to see him, and you know, I was always the voice of reason, right? So I'd be like, "Yo, D, like, yo, the cars, bro, you're doing too much with the cars. Too many cars, my nigga. Harlem's yeah, very cool. small. New York every is cool. very small. Like, you, he's like, yo, I was, all I used to do when I was sitting in the joint, all I used to do is like, oh man, I'm gonna get this car. Oh, I like that car. He says, that's all I would do is obsess over cars. So when he and came he, home, and that he could drive his ass off. He could drive his ass off. Drives like that's that right. fast and furious, ain't got nothing on him. That's right. Oh, well, we used to have a ball. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we used to have a fucking ball. But you know, and you know, even with him, me mentioning his name, you know. We but talk. before he goes, before you go there, you 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 have to uh, share how it is you made that transition, um, ultimately from being a stick up kid to. I mean, yeah, you had the people who died, were dying around you, whatever, whatever. But you ultimately end up having a direct hit situation. You made a move. That that came back to you specifically, and that is what sent you away for your, your first stint, yeah, yeah, right? That, Tell us about that. Share that. But you know, we wasn't going to stop robbing at that time, so everybody was trying to get us. I mean, you know, you know, we gonna have a snitch that they scared and they pushed up on one kid, and he was saying, you know, you know, my name gonna come out. So we got into things where we had we had shootouts. But see, the whole thing is. We've always been deep in the street, you know that right. from growing up with us. But we always been deep. So if you if all right, you you found out for now what you want to do. That's right. So I mean, now what you know, and what everybody you can that prove. be a, everybody was with me is 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 cold killers. So they don't they don't, we don't care. We just busting off, hitting, going back and forth, and so they want they so they want the truth because you know I mean the big drug dealers was coming to us. Yo, why don't you just work for us? We give you the packages. You're running. I said, Nah, I'm never work. I never work for nobody. That's why I was telling you at the time. I never was gonna be a, a, a worker. If you try to make me a worker, I'm gonna take your shit. So I was boss all my life, and that's how me and Big D got cool because Big D was a boss all his life, and me and him just be partnered up. But the only reason I could say his name because we talked about this for a while, and he said. He said, use my name. You have to because we was always together. Right. So I said, yeah, I, I'm going to say your name. But, you know, we, we have limits of what we say. But yes. he said, yeah, tell the people, you know. Everybody know because they, when they seen him, they seen me. Yep. And then after that, D-Nice came along and we had Nice with us. So nice. Was, 
and Kool Aid. So we Shout know we nice. we was together. You know that was my goal. I'm gonna get to that later on, but that was my goal to put bosses from different boroughs down with me. I was probably the only one to ever do that. You could put workers from other boroughs, but nobody had bosses down with them like that. Because I used to watch The Godfather, you know, all the movies, and you see how they put things together. And I was like, yeah, we could do that too. But don't make their mistakes. So every time I copied somebody, I didn't make their mistakes. Even like when I was doing the black tie affairs, when we was doing the parties and you was coming to and you know about the parties. I... I got that from watching the TV show Dallas Dynasty, where the white people dress up with, you know, the tuxedos and all that. And I said, damn, why we can't do that? So I started throwing the parties where we was dressed fly. You was dressed fly. I seen you at the party. So we was all fly. We got all the baddest girls all overcoming. We giving out $500 for the best dressed legs. I mean, yep. best pair of legs back in yep. the day, the yep. best yep. dressed yep. couple yep. or the whatever. Thousand dollars. This We didn't care about the money because it's drug money. So we throwing this out. That's interesting. We had the best DJs. We had the best um, entertainers coming to perform. I had, you know, all the top people that don't acknowledge me now. Um, Mary J. Blige did her first song at my party. Keith Sweat and t- all them groups. Guy and all them. So all of them is it's it's like family to us. We having right. ball. That's right. So that's but, where my vision comes from. But but wait now, share with them. And I, I mean I. I, you shared it with me, whatever, and I don't think there's anything wrong with sharing it here. But that that stick up that got you them was it four years? Yeah. It's you know it's kind of a funny story because of how you got how they came to you. Oh, how they got me? Yeah. Oh, uh, they came. They um. This one stick up I did for this. He he's dead now, but he's a piece of shit because he he ended up telling on me. But that was the first time I really experienced snitching. So they found his car. They got his license plate. So when they got his license plate, he had a BM. So he got his license plate. He gave me up. But then he tried to have his sister call my house and tell her, tell me, yo, my brother said they found out who you are. Break out. So I said, yeah, if I found out who I am, you know, he told He's the only one could have told. There's no way he's gonna tell. They so, found out. Yeah. Yo, man, they got us. And my God Come bless out. the dead, my little partner, I love him to death, Curtis. He wasn't telling on me. He was bragging about me to this dude. So when he's bragging about me, he ended up telling on all the other stickups I did. See what I'm who, saying? Who? On the legal shit. Who ended up telling about the all that? Dude that? The, the dude, dude that Curtis is. is. No, Curtis. It's my man. He's right. Dead. So Curtis is bragging to this dude to the about dude because he's telling him and how. And the dude ends up telling all about yeah. your. Other I don't like talking stickers. about the dead, so he's dead. Yeah. But this Curtis was my was like right. my little brother. So Curtis was bragging about yo shoe shoe go on the spot, lay everything down, boom 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 boom. So he's like, what? So Peter, I got this dude that owe money. So I, can you go get get it for me? I'll give you like half of it. I said bet. So it was about fifteen thousand. So I went and, and and got the dude, but. They got the car license plate, and that's how they got, you know, they came after me. But he told who, who I was. So I break I break out. I told my mother, I got to break out for a while. Police is after me. Mm-hmm. So I break out. So she changes all the pictures. This is a funny part I think you talked yes, about. She yes, puts the, yes, yes. She puts the, um, a picture of a, a little black guy in there, not me. So she got pictures in the, in the frames and put all the pictures of me away. So when the detectives come there, they looking for me. So they said, you know, she said, they, where's your son? He said, oh, he's not here. He's, he's, wherever she said I was, I forgot. So he said, um, can we come in? They talking to her. So they looking at the pictures. So it's like, you have a picture of your son? I said, he's right there. She said, he's right there. So they, you know, a dude that don't even look like me. So <laughs> the whole thing is, she, I love my mother. But they, they, um, they leave. So she called me. She said, Yo, I, you, I think you could come home because they, they, I, they da, 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 da. I said, all right, cool. So I came back. So about two weeks later, I'm, I'm thinking I'm chilling. And my man Melo was like, yo, let's go play some ball. So I said, fuck it, let's go ball. But now I have my pony bag, but I'm still making sure, you know, I'm always making sure. I, I had a gun on me the rest of my life until I got busted again. But I go to the toilet, shower, everything with a gun. But, but, I had my 357 mag on me, and it was in my bag, my big pony bag, and the basketball. Now, the 357 mag is the, the, 
the the, the gun they said I allegedly robbed these people with. Now, the crazy shit, when I robbed them people on 149th, right in Third Avenue, I did it in broad daylight, for a shower, people coming back and forth from the train. Oh, you wanted the maximum amount of audience. I, I can dig it. No. Just, <laughs> I, I, I look at that now and you? I bugged out. I said, yo, police could have came and I would have had to shoot it out with the police. So God, God is great, man. So I get these niggas to give me the money. But everybody else thought it was a film, the way it was done. What? People walking down the street, like stopping and looking and then keep walking. But it was really a robbery. So going back, now I got the basketball, 357 in my bag. I come out, we walk, we coming down the block. So, you know, we playing around. You know how me and you play around you, you trying to steal the ball and stuff like that. So I spun. I spun that nigga, put the cuff right on me. He said, yeah, we got your ass now. So I was like, the first thing I thought was like, yo, can at least you, let me get the basketball and my, and my man in the bag to take? He said, go ahead. Because I had the 357 yeah, mag in there. So that's when I went in jail so, did the four years. So the, the one of the things that, you, you know, you when you initially told me this story years ago was uh, one of the most obvious things that I would have thought would have been an issue throughout your entire criminal activities. So they were looking for the six foot Chinese guy. Right. Mm -hmm. So like. That would always be you because you were the only six foot fucking Chinese guy running around. How doing long shit. you know me? I never had a nickname. Nope. Everybody called me P the shoot. That's fact. So I, it's it's like I didn't need one because that's that who was I am. They all that's know right. me by my that's name. Right. I never that's right. had to go and make a name up, change my face. I couldn't do it. Everybody, yeah. you know, they couldn't even get a lineup for me in this on this case, the first case, because who how you gonna find Okay. Five, six Chinese dudes at six, two and a half, six, three. You ain't going to do it. So what they did, they sat us down in chairs, and they didn't even get no Chinese dudes. They put like five Spanish dudes. And, and you could still see they were shorter than me. So they railroad, you know, they always railroad you in these, in these corporate That's procedures. That's a fact. Man. But yeah, so That's it was hard to find a Chinese, just like right now with this movie stuff. How are we going to find a Chinese dude to play me? That is, I always wondered about that. We're blacking them and, and, and you know, people name names, but... How, I mean, who's going to do it? Who are we going to find that that has that swag, that that was black and Chinese? But, you know, he's he has a black personality because he lived in, he grew up in the Bronx, but he has a Chinese-looking nationality and, and origin. So what do you do? That's going to be the hardest part when we get to that, you know? Right. Yeah, that that is definitely going to be challenging, bro. That's, that's going to be, there's going to have to be, I would imagine, some talent that hasn't come to the forefront yet, which is cool. If he's talented... And he hasn't been exposed. Mm -hmm. He'd be a breakout star. You know what I mean? But yeah, because everybody, just... everybody that I know, they'd be like, "Man, we ain't gonna get no Chinese dude. Just get Terrence Howard to do it. Get somebody." You know, I said, "I'll be laughing." I said, "Yo, you're crazy." But every time there's somebody who's uh, light complected, is they always think that's the same thing Meech was saying when we were talking about you know his joint before the TV show came about, mm -hmm. and it was just going to be a uh, a movie, and you know we had this long conversation about, you know, who would play him potentially. And Terrence Howard, that, that's all kept coming up, Terrence yeah, Howard. Everybody always makes But he's too old for that now. Yeah, yeah well, he said young. he's not doing no more movies. Yeah, he said he's he, he so he he done. Know. He said he's done. You know, we'll see what the checks say, though. <laughs> you know when what I mean? Talks, um, so now, you know, you, you, you catch this case. That holds you for four years. Yeah. So this is your first time in prison. Mm -hmm. uh, how old were you? Mm, I guess it had to be 19, then, then I'm about to be real my age, but it had to be 1984. Uh, now, I got arrested in 83. I went to jail because I got bailed out. All right. I went I went to jail and did the time in 84. Okay. So you figured 94, 84. I was probably 20. So okay. 20, so. All right. So so this is this is your first time in prison. Um, scared to death. <laughs> what, what, what is it, what is this like? First of all, let me ask you: Is this something I always ask my um, my students in in prison? Um, did you know that? And of course, you, you you had to know that if you were caught doing what you were doing, that you could get locked up. You knew that. Yeah. Okay. So knowing I can get locked up if I get jammed in this. Okay. I'm going to do it. That means I accept the potential of me getting locked up. 
did you have any idea that you could get, you know, years for what you were doing? Of course you do. But, you know, people don't think about that until the shit hit the fan. When they robbing or killing or selling drugs, nobody. And, I, and that's why you have to be strong to where you can deal with anything that come with it. Because if a lot of these dudes, they be like cold killers, gangster. Yeah, man. Then they get arrested, get under that light, and they say, well, you know you facing 25 years. And niggas be like, okay, Peter Shue, told, Peter Shue did, is up the street. <laughs> Cartier, he's over here. This dude's it. Now, he, you know, so that's what they do. But, you know, I was always built to prepare myself and anybody that was locked up with me, we tell you, I was I was the same funny hanging out, same That's type a of fact. dude. Everybody I, that I everybody that we know that was locked that I came into contact with is like, yo, Pete, keep it going. I don't that, that shit don't. I do time like I drink wine. So, you know, that's how it is. So the whole thing is you gotta be prepared for that. But, you know, going to Vikings Island and I and I heard all the stories, I never been there before. I was a little scared at first because That's what I want. That's the third part of the of that question. Go ahead. Um so you knew you could get locked up for doing what you were doing, mm -hmm. and you accepted that you you had you, you had an idea that you could do years if you were convicted. But did you? How close to what your idea, to the degree you thought about it, your idea of that experience? How close to the reality of it was your idea? Because at the point at which you accept the potential for something, you make up in your mind what the degree of it is. And then you say, I can handle that, and you move forward. So how close to the actual reality was your perception of what it would be like if it happened? I mean, you know. Basically, I'm mentally prepared. I'm always, I'm always was, you know, focused that I can, something can happen to me. Focused that I can but get But when killed. you got there, was it what you expected? Was it greater, deeper, harder than you expected? What? And we, that's the first day. I was a little scared because I had never seen this before. I never experienced this. And I heard the things that happened. You robbed, raped, and all this type of stuff. There's none of that. Beaten to death. None of that. By Listen, the inmates and or the uh, niggas, corrections. Niggas said, employees. I was online going to child. And the niggas said, um, what size you wear? <laughs> See what I'm saying? So I always was prepared because I was taught. Mm -hmm. So I was like, your size, nigga. That's right. So, you know, then they was looking at me, but when I started going down the, the road to go to the child, the old the old timers then that knew me, they um they were shocked to see me, like, what the hell are you doing in here? So they said, You right and 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 this nigga Big Bear, you know, he 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 killed the person by just hitting him. That's what he was in jail for, knocking him out and killed him. He had Big Bear on the side of his arm. Where was he from? He's from the Bronx. The Bronx. Yes. I remember Big Bear. God. So he came. Damn, I totally forgot that person ever existed. He came. He came. He, he never said, got out of jail. Huh? No, nah, he said, he said, yo, where you at? I said, one upper. He said, I'll be up there in a little while. And he, he said, y'all better look out for him. This is our family. So after that, nigga start, yo, you need some cosmetics? You need this? They start all that thinking about robbing me or whatever they was thinking. Right. They, they, um, that left their minds. They left their minds. Right. But, you know, I did get in an incident with this man named Havel. He was like 6'8". Dang. And we, we had uh, um, from the, in the quads, and I went out to the yard. You know, they bounce you about, so I'm in the quads now. So I went out to the yard. I come back. My sneakers missing from my cell. Mm. Now, I wear like 10 and a half. This nigga had to be wearing like 16, 18, you know? Right. So... Because we looking in the cells to see, you know, the, most of the cells were door, closed because, you know, if you're out in the backyard, niggas are sleeping. They got their cell closed. I see my motherfucking sneakers in the cell. So I was like, so I told my man Drago, I said, yo, man, the sneakers is here. He said, oh, man, that's a big nigga shoe. He said, yo, what you going to do? I said, I don't know, man. Now, you know, I couldn't get to bear them. If I got to bear them, they would have handled it. So... We lock in. I'm still talking to um, Drago because Drago's right next door. We're talking through the cell, you know. I said, yo, man, I'm going to have to get him. 
He said, nigga, he said, you ain't got no wins against this nigga. I said, I know. I've got to figure out something. So when uh, um, the doors open for breakfast, child, in the morning, I wait. I made sure I seen the police. I ran up and just snuffed him. Boom. Did no damage at all. <laughs> I snuffed this nigga. Yo. This Beast thing. <laughs> no damage. So he grabs me. And I'm busting up, but I'm making noise so the police said, yeah, motherfucker, yeah, motherfucker, yeah, you know. <laughs> so the police come, they grab us, you know. Now, the, the, shoe, was, the shoe was overcrowded at that time, so. The shoe was a special housing unit yeah, for those who don't know. They put us back in the cells. So he, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. You know, he's talking all that crazy shit. So I was like, yeah, come on, nigga. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm a paper gangster. We got the door closed. <laughs> so, yo, so now we, um, you know, they kept us in there the whole day or night. Fed us, you know, his side come out. I had to stay in. His, I come out, he had to stay in. But he's still talking shit. Yeah, wait till, wait till I get you. Wait till I get you. You know, boom, boom, boom. So now I'm with me and Draco talking again. He said, yo, you got to get out of here. I said, yeah. Oh, meanwhile, I got my sneakers back. Right. Because when they when they cuffed him first, I went and grabbed my sneakers. They said, what you do? I said, these are mine. And I put them, I just put, threw them in my cell. And they seen that those are my size and not his. So now they know what's going on. But anyway, I'm in the cell. I was like, yo, he going to kill me, man, if I don't get the fuck out of here. So he said, what you going to do? I don't know, man. I don't know. So then the morning comes. They got child. You know, my shit always comes to me like that. My, I, I, I don't, like me and you could, like, what we going to do? And then it'll just hit plop up in my head. So I went out to get the breakfast. Good to be tough, I just said, baby. I'm tired of this shit. Flip the whole shit over. All the oatmeal bread and flick. So they, they bump us. Me. Then they got to take me out. And they got to make room for me in the hole to get me out of there. So they got me out of there. But that was a funny incident. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, like I tell cats all the time, bro. It's, it's good to be tough, but it's better to be smart. Yeah, you got to be smart. You so, know what I mean? Like, tough won't get you all the way through life. You, you've got to use your head. Then I ran into my man Jeff to the left. I know you know Jeff to the left of in the course. Bronx. I ran into all of them, and they was like, yo, you know, we, we got you up here. You good, you know, because I was young, and I was skinny. And them niggas is working out, and, you know, I'm jacket wreck if I go out there. So they be like, yo, we got you, man. You know, don't worry about nothing. So Jeff, 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 was, Jeff was, you know, good with his hands back, in, back then. So niggas be like rumbling, nobody, you know, I had no problem. But then I went up north and I got with my man Bear, shout out to my man Bear, the Bear from Harlem now. This is my man, you know, he in London, they deported him, but he's my main dude. And he ended up working with, working and doing shit with me back back in the day when I came home. But Bear, Bear is, um, he made sure I was right when I got to him, little Benny. Well, you know, we had a little mob, and then they wanted me to play ball. Everybody wanted me to play ball for them, so right. I was that good in basketball one time. So my man Kenny Satterfield, I don't know if you knew Kenny, but he was he was running shit on the mountain at that time because Kenny was nice. When I got there, I took it to throne. He's like, yo, you coming up here, you coming up here taking my title. I'm the baddest nigga on this compound, but <laughs> I was I was a little better, so I was killing him, so that's how, that's how I was. So I did a good, I did a good bid. You know, for the time I was in there. I, what was your sentence? Two and a third to seven. But I did four years because I stabbed somebody. You know, because he he told um he had lost us. He was a soul. It was old basketball. He said um all y'all can suck my dick, and you know that's Ooh. a no no. So I poked him in the shower, and I ran right into the motherfucking police too. With the bloody knife in your hand. Bloody knife in my hand. So Yikes! They, they they caught me. So I did the rest most of my time in the shoe. But I did like 18 months in the shoe. Shoe in the shoe. So, yeah, that's what they always say. Too. Shoe in the shoe. Shoe going to the shoe. The fans do it too. They, they the police used to laugh. <laughs> shoe, we got shoe to the shoe. And they be laughing at me, you know. <laughs> so, you know, with all of the running around reckless that you was doing, sticking cats up and shit like that, uh, how is it that you didn't run into any of your former victims in the penitentiary? Well, most of them didn't know we was we the ones. The only the ones that found out from the dude telling our name, he those are the few that knew. But a lot of niggas that like, we had masks on and stuff, so they didn't know they didn't know um who we was and stuff like that. But it's one one of our people went soft and he he 
he gave us up. So, but he didn't tell everybody, but he told people that was looking to find out. And these was some drug dealers that you you know and I know. That's old timers. But they, you know, I talked to them. I ran into them on my second bid on the major one. And, I, and you know, I talked not when I went to jail for the sticking up. But I told them, I told them about some incidents. And it was like, that was you, shoot. You motherfucker. We wanted to get you so bad. <laughs> I said, like, yeah. I said, like, yeah. I just had to come clean, man. Because, I, you know, I retired from that shit. But they, don't, they knew. But, you know. The drug dealers, the ones that was in power, they was trying to get us to team up with them because we we bust our gun. But my cousin wasn't with that shit, and he was the leader at the time. It's crazy that he was the leader when we were sticking up. I became the leader in the drug game because everybody just clinged to me. I don't know what it is about, you know, the over. They always, well, like, they trust me. They know I'm loyal. They know I ain't going to tell. They know I take it, you know, I take it to the grave. So they all, everybody just want to get with me. Well, I mean, you, you, there's also an element of, uh, I guess you can say, uh, a celebrity, you know? Um, charisma and um, style play a, a major part in cats getting opportunity, getting in position in the game still. Probably more so now in this day than in our day, you know? So... A cat could show up, roll up in the right car, wearing the white watch, having on the right outfit. Nobody knows him, but somebody's going to approach him. Don't let him go in the club and buy 20, 30 bottles of champagne. Somebody going to approach him. Somebody going to approach him and see if they can get something. Mm -hmm. If he don't have it, they're going to try to sell him something because he looked like he got it. Even when we was beefing, right, on, you know, before I went to jail on this case, we was beefing. Dudes would try to come and talk to me before they'll go with D and, and nice and cool or whatever because they because, felt you know D would tell them to get the fuck in his face. Yeah, they, they 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 felt I was more approachable, approachable to talk sorry. to, but they don't realize I was just worse dangerous because I'd laugh for your smile, but then I'm gonna say, all right, he gotta go. Fuck him. But that's how I was. We're gonna move forward a little bit. Um there was something that was I guess this came this was in your book. Uh one night, uh, Smokey Robinson was on stage singing at the Apollo. That's when they tried to kill us. That was that was that night. Yeah, that was that oh, night. Oh, that's when Smokey okay. said, "I ain't performing here no more." So tell tell us about that. I mean, I don't want to go into details, but they came they came on one side. They you know my because they if people want details. They can get your book. Yeah, the cousin, the cousin, my cousin. No, but I can't say names. Or nothing. My cousin really they was after him mostly because he was. He was the one, you know, the driving force for that little crew we had. You know, I wasn't really a part of that crew. I was a part of it because of him. But I had my own stick-up crew. So we get together sometime, and we might need help. Oh, this this spot, we could get 80,000, but we need some more people. We'll go and recruit somebody. So that's how it does with me and him. And, you know, if he gets some money, he's going to hit me off. If I get some money, I'm going to hit him off, even if we wasn't doing something together because that's, that's him. But they was really looking for him and his crew. When I was there, Smokey Bob said, yeah, I'm going to see that shit. So they shot from this side, but we was on the other side. So a few people got hit. A few people got hit. Dell, Dell from 148th Street? Yeah. He got hit that night. Yeah, a yeah. few people got hit. Yeah. But, he died. He died that night. Mm -hmm. um, he was sitting in the, in the balcony, right? Sitting in the private balcony. Everybody was, you know, we was, we was in the area. Everybody was in the area. But they ain't get me. That's what I was happy they ain't get me. You know, because I could have got hit that night too. But yeah, that, they, that, they was that coming down on us hard, man. They was catching us off guard. And one time I had I had one of the brothers' guns at his, his snub nose 38, and I didn't get it to him in time. But he shouldn't have been going. I told my people he shouldn't have been going back to the area anyway, knowing that these niggas was after us. And he went back to the area, and they caught him out there. So What did he go back for? To do another he lick. did, so I don't know. I, I mean, I, I still don't understand. Nah, he needed to go back. He went to see a girl, I think. Uh -huh. But it's always it's either the lick I or had chick. his joint though. I said, "Yo, you shouldn't have." So he, you know, we took that kind of hard. I mean, we retaliated, but he 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 didn't bring him back. But yeah, that was that was that was crazy too, because I felt bad because I had his joint. But I kept telling him, "Yo, I, I, I'm busy right now. I get to you, but don't you know stay away from the area." And he still went over there. And they, they grabbed him. Could you imagine what his last thoughts were? 
This nigga told me. Yeah, he probably cursing me out. Yeah, I told this nigga to bring my shit. But he got, they would have had him anyway because I heard the way they snatched him up, it was a bunch of them. So he couldn't get away from that. He shouldn't have never went back because I knew not to go over there until we, until we um, made them come to an tr- agreement to leave us alone or, or it's going to be on every day. Well, it goes down. They can't make no money if we coming at them every day. And that's, that's right. how we used to do it. That's right. And they got to be on set. And before them, kids don't have before to be them phones, set. they had to go to them pay phones. And that's right. That's how you get Catch caught. Them on, uh, you know? Page yeah. them. And they, so when they, all you got to do is get, in, get the pager number from abroad. You get the pager number. You beep them. You put a code in. You put her code in. They go into the phone. You know what phone they use near the block. That's it. When I watch all Happened the movies. A billion guys. I watch all the movies going back to James Cagney. So Me too. I, I, so we watched and read all the books. And you, see, and you see how they was catching niggas. So I yep. was like, yeah, they not. You know, you could get me. But, you know, you know back in my last ever before I caught, went to jail for 20-some years, you know, it would have been hard because we had 20 niggas outside waiting for us. And the, the ones that don't go to the parties, they be just getting high, weed up. The young kids, they strap. And then we're in there with 20-something deep straps. Yeah. So yeah. if you get me, yeah, you could get me, but it's going to be I a, mean, if you know, we ain't going alone. At, 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 at the parties, they would have been, they, oh, been, been, hit. It been a war because we hit. were all strapped. And we had, you know, I carried machine guns. Yeah, we had a whole bunch of good dudes with us. So they, they, you know, they knew. That's why, you know, the people that's, you know, they asked me why they never tried you. I said, because, I mean, they could. I, anybody could get had. I don't, right. I mean, they, right. if they could get, you know. The president. The, yeah, they, they, <laughs> yeah, that's the, basically, they could get anybody. Yeah. But I'm I'm not an easy target. You roll up on and, Ronald Reagan and hit him point blank. And you know, y'all going with us. That's right. And even if they if they did something to one of us, we want to retaliate. I mean, I could go, but before I get Bevy, 10 or 15 of y'all going that's with right. us. So that's how it was back in the day. So dudes ain't dudes ain't mess with us. They didn't know, know what time it is. Tell me about um Anthony, Forty Street Anthony, Wild Bunch Crew. But that's that's my cousin's crew. All of them, they just good dudes. They was all good dudes. He he. They found Anthony with his uh, his head was cut off, right? Yeah, he was. He, he was found a, a a vacant uh, Bronx building. He slept. And see, everybody, listen. His body was found in Harlem. His head was found in in, yeah. in the Bronx. Yeah, he a good dude. I, I see. I didn't really. Socialized with him that much, you know. That was my cousin's crew, but little Bruce too. Little Bruce, Bruce, good dude. Yeah, these are all my cousin's crew. Terry, they, I should, they if found, you see, he they found him with his throat cut. Yeah, this is all behind the stick up shit, wasn't it? Yeah, basically, all them uh, uh, other damage that they did is, you know, that was that that was his crew, the, the Wild Bunch. They was they was just doing crazy shit, and and my man Bell from overseas, he was part of that. He was with them dudes. But you know the whole thing. They was older than me at the time. Most of them dudes were older than me. So the yeah. 40th Street like always had uh, like a, a high concentration of uh, vicious dudes. It was a culture yeah. within 40th Street. Yeah, you know that's what where mean? my cousin grew that's up. That's what Jamie O and them came out of and all that. Yeah. You know, all uh, them dudes them was all them dudes was you know, right. and they they He's, wasn't scared. They didn't care about getting caught off guard. And that's how you know they felt they could hold their own even if they get caught off guard. And you 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 know sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. It depends. Everything goes on guard. You got to be lucky because they. I don't seen dudes get caught out there, and you thinking like, "Damn, he should have got it," but he got away. Yep. So, I mean, it, it, you, I, how is it that you uh, you ended up going to um, MCC with I, all that shit you were going? How did you end up going back to school? Because you graduated trying, high school. I was trying. I was trying to get miraculously. Uh, yo, but how I graduated was not by. Um, Graduation. I had to go to college to get a certain amount of credits yes. to get the diploma. I know what you mean. So that's how I got it. I didn't get it off the string because yeah. they. I attempted that. I went. To, I went to BMCC. Yeah, after BMCC. I left, after I left high school, I went to BMCC and tried to do that. BMCC whatever, that was, was a hangout. Yeah, that's the worst place but, you could go. Yeah, I was like, nah. We playing ball. You know for what them. happened with me? My um, my partner who I had rocking the spot while I was at school, he got himself killed. Mm. So I had to go back to the spot. Yeah. Well, I was dipping and dabbing, but I was mostly um, caught up in trying to do the right thing at that time. Because my, you know, I I tell everybody this. I th- I believe it's my fault that my mother passed because of mm. the heartaches I caused her. And I said this at her funeral too, and everybody say no, that ain't it. I said, but it had to be because she had to endure a lot of pain of, from being there for me when I. Shit happened for me, even when 
when when when I caught that case, the first case on the stick up shit, she's like, she came to court and said, "Nah, he was in the house. He ain't never, you know." So my mother was one hundred percent for me. I mean, all mothers is one hundred percent for their kids, I guess. But she's like, he was in the Good house. Ones. So after after the test, she gave that testimony. I said, "Ma, I wasn't at the house." She said, "Shut up, you was at the house." I said, "All right." <laughs> I was like, yeah. So she she testified on the oath that I was at the house uh, with her, but. I wasn't. And, you know, it's just that I feel, you know, deeply that it's my fault that my mother left earlier because of the heartaches I caused and stuff from me and always getting in trouble and stuff. So going to, going back to what we talked about, school, doing being defiant, running around with that 38 on me, the, the neighborhood, hearing about it and going back to, you know, she was shot at these gangs and she did this and she did that. You know, it's- Who was your father, bro? Huh? Who was your father through all of this? Well, my father and mother, he was a gangster too, but my father and mother separated. So when he left, that's when the burden came on me. I was like 13, 14 years old when he left. So I had to like barely take over. Man in the house then. Yeah. We, I mean, what, did he, did he, you know, he was Chinese, so. Really? He'd be in Chinatown. So he was cheating on my mother. And, you know, when I go down there, they used to search me and everything when I go see my own father, so. It was like he was part of that one of them gangs and stuff, but I, I, I just you know, I, um, I back. We got you know we me and him became distant. He was closer to my my other sister, my second sister Joanne. He was closer to her, and you know, more so me. My, I was my grandmother's favorite, but he was he, she was his, his his mother. No, my mother's mother. Mm. That was my heart. I jumped in the grave when when they put her in the grave. So it's a funny story about that too, because I jumped in the grave, and they had to pull me out the grave. And um, so when my mother died, my sister was like, "Yo, let us know now, cause we're not gonna have a funeral if you're gonna do that same stupid shit jumping in the grave." I said, "Nah, I ain't gonna do that. I'm older now. I ain't gonna do that." You know what I'm saying? But I love my grandma. She was my she. Like if we had, if we had liver on Friday. I get a steak. And my father be like, man, how he getting a steak? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm the bread one in this family, you know, because he was at the time. Right. And then so my mother became a nurse, and she stopped bringing in good money. But my grandma was always spoiling me. Even when she spanked me and cried, she was like, you know, and she see I'm pouting. She come on, I made you some cookies. I make you, the, you know, something that she was my sweetheart. That's what's up. You know, so I miss her. But, you know, my mother is my heart too, so, you know, you know, I still, like, her birthday was in November. I still get. Really? November what? 16. Man, so I still seven. get a little you misty Scorpio, with that. Mom. That's serious. Scorpio, yeah. And, 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 and my mother was, she, I take it, I couldn't let her, you seen she come to the parties because I couldn't, my sisters I have work in the door. So if she don't, if I don't let her come, she'd be pouting. So I said, oh my God. <laughs> I said, Ma. This is a this is not that type of party you could be at. No, I want to come. I make her come. I let her come. I got to put bodyguards around her. You seen? I got to put like four dudes. Don't make sure she. Right. But then all the girls is dancing. With my mother, they having a ball. So my mother's dancing and they laughing and joking. I was like, this is crazy. So Big D and them used to just shake their head. They said, Yo, you know your mother shouldn't be down at here. The gangster party. Yeah, she used to be at the gangster party. That is funny, bro. When she met Mike Tyson, oh, that was I brought Mike Tyson to the Bronx. And I brought him to her house, and um, she was sleeping. And it was like Sunday morning. We was hanging out at Bentley's all night. So she loved Mike Tyson. She never met him, so she loved him. So I knocked. She's in the bedroom. So I, I turned on the light, she's, and I got Mike hiding. And, and all the other Brooklyn niggas and niggas I was hanging out with that night. So I said, Ma, I got a surprise for you. She was like, what, bro? I'm trying to sleep. So usually... I bring her food that's, you know, she loved City Island. So, so she said, she said, um, what, what do you want? So I said, I said, come here, come here. So Mike gets the ones in the room. She's like, ah, she starts screaming. She's so good. <laughs> she's so, she said, I don't want him to see me like this. <laughs> <laughs> Mike started hugging her and kissing her. He's like, he's like, ah, mama. You know, that was, that was the highlight of her life. She asked. That's when awesome. When she seen Mike, she went. That was, she always wanted to meet Mike. You 
when you got out uh, the first time, you went and tried to do some legit shit. You went and got a job yeah, at a telephone company. I went back to the phone company and somebody snuck me in to get the to get the job at the phone company. Because you had a felony. Because so. I had the felonies. Yeah. And I didn't check the application. I just said, if, if, if ever convicted, I said no. So these, these people that was managers, they snuck me back in there because, you know, when I was working there before, my work is, you know, A-League. So you had been working there prior. You had had a Way job. Back. Like Way back. Like when? Before I went to jail on the state joint. Remember when I said I stopped getting high and everything? Right. I went and got me a job. Oh. So I was working for the phone company on 3rd oh, Avenue. Well, you, were, you was really trying to straighten up. I was up. trying. I was trying. But, trying you to know, square up. So even when I came home, all the dudes was like, yo, you know, all right, go back to the stick-up days when I came home. Everybody quit their jobs. So niggas was like, he said, our homie home now, we quit. So they was quit. I said, yo, I'm niggas, I said, why you quit your jobs? They said, we know you, you ain't been in jail four years and you ain't come up with a plan for us. So we start, you know, we That's start crazy. doing our thing again. But when I, when I had to do it as 21, these niggas just told about the same shit. I said, man, listen, ho, 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 ho. I ain't got no, I'm not doing nothing wrong. But the whole thing, when I was working, I tried to get back in the phone company after the stick up days. And, uh, you know, they they uh, got me in. I was working for about uh, three, three, four weeks on 375 Pearl Street. So I was a, uh, uh, uh so for a representative. So what happened, right, the P.O. really jammed me up because these niggas be wanting you to call them all the time. Mm -hmm. So, but I jammed myself up too because instead of turning the phone off on my desk and going to the the hangout room where you could make your own phone calls there, I I, I called her from my desk. And this um, supervisor did like me. He, um, because I never said nothing to him, but all his people would want to come and ask me for help. Cause I knew it, I knew the business, cause I was working for them before. So I can't. He found out that I uh, um that I um was talking to PO. Okay, so I guess he did his homework. So he goes to the upper upper brass, and I'm sitting at my desk chilling, and I see these four security guards coming. They armed, you know, in the phone company, they strapped. So they coming, they coming. Sent the goons. Yeah, they sent the goons, but. I'm looking like, you know, it's 300 something people on my floor. So I was like, damn, damn, I wonder who they coming to get. <laughs> and they're coming to get me. So when they came to get me, they pulled me in the back and they got all these white people sitting at the desk and they was like, yo, you know why you're here? I said, no. They said, um, is this your application? I said, yeah. They said, well, you checked off that you never been convicted. I said, yeah, I did. He said, why did you do that? I said, because if I did, you wouldn't have gave me the job. You know, simple stuff. Right. So they said, well, we don't like liars and stuff like that. So they was like, yo. Um, which mean, which is code for we, we like to keep the system in line and keep disenfranchising people so to perpetuate the status quo. But go ahead. So they said, we want you to, we want you to resign. So I'm not resigning. You got to fire me. So then my, my um, manager, she came in the room. And they said, Miss Holman, did you know that this guy lied on his application? She said, no, because she didn't know. The one that got me in was my old boss. So she was like, no, I didn't. He said, but can we do anything? He's top, top of the line with his work. You know, so she said, I never seen nobody this smart with this, with what he's doing for people that people still struggling after 10 years of this shit. That's the number one stress job too, telephone representative. A lot of people get heart attacks over that job because you got to constantly answer the phone, be on the phone with customers and going through all this shit. And then I was, selling, I was selling the custom calling services at that time, call waiting, three-way calling. Out. So it was, it's, it's a stressful job. So anyway, she says, nothing we could do. She said, no. She said, no, we don't like liars. I wish you'd have started your own company, I swear. I wish I had the money to do it at that time. I would have did it. But then, then they told me, well, if you tell us, you know, who told you, who who got you back in here? I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know. I just got in. He said, well, if you tell us who got you in here, we might do something to let you keep your job. I said, I don't know. I, I, I said, you know, so 
they end up firing me. Yeah, you're obviously not familiar with my cloth, lady. So they walk, they walk up there. <laughs> yeah, they always try to get you to tell. So they try to walk. They walk me out the building, and you have an ID card they have to take. It's like they break the card so you can't come back in the building no more. Because it, 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 that 375 Pearl Street is like a highly secure phone company place. It's down there and there. I'm trying to tell. Mm-hmm. So I, I I lost that job. And when I drive, you no, know, I was driving, you know, when I first came home, D made so I had a car and stuff. So when I drive, I drive the Cherokee Limited mm-hmm. up the on the highway to go home. I really contemplating driving off that off that bridge because I was like, yo, this is crazy, man. I tried to do the right thing and that still can't win. So when I got home, my mother already got the word because the lady that got me the job caught the people and they caught the PO and the PO caught, you know, the, they talked my mother and my mother's crying. I was like, yo, she said, Peter, she said, I heard, I heard what happened. I said, don't start. I'm never working again in my life. That's what I told her and I never did. Then the PO was like, Miss Morwood, I think her name was, she said, well, Peter, don't worry, we, t- keep your head up. We're going to get you another job. I said, Miss Morwood, no disrespect. You can have me come in there every day. I'm never working again. Never you know, going to subject myself to someone's and I was whim to, again. And, and then I, that's when I had to get my crew and say, all right, I'm in. Let's do something. And, and that's, that's when, when the drug started. That's when the drug game started. So what was your first foray into the drug business? Um, how did you get that initial start? How did that come about? Well, you know, Big D, Big D gave me a present. And I thought it was a gun. You know what I'm saying? I didn't open it. But I did smell some weird shit coming out. But <laughs> I didn't think about nothing. So when I finally opened up, it was some coke. And he was telling me, you know. What, what did he give you? A key just a to brick. get started. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I get. What was the price of a brick then? Oh, man. I guess anywhere from 16 to 20. I think it was 21, about 16, something like that. Man. But he got. he. But I ended up getting a connect. And I was getting, giving up the keys for, for us, for 10000 and everybody else, I was just charging them, you know, whatever, how close they was to me. As close as it was to me, it would be a cheaper price. So you know? so when you um, when you got it, like, you hadn't been a, I never did been a the drug crack. user. I you never, never did been the crack. A, so right, he, never... he tried to tell me over the phone how to cook it. I'm thinking, yeah, this shit, it says, you see, yo, yeah, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. It's easy for him. I cooked and fucked the whole shit up. The so, whole, first of all, wait a minute, hold me. I messed the whole shit you up. You attempted your first time to cook an the entire whole brick. Up. And the whole that thing. That right there was, was, was and a And you know what happened? He said it's so easy. Do it. He said so easy. I never cooked no coke. So what happened, right? I barely got the money back at cost, so at least I got that back. Mm-hmm. But after that, then I had to get me a, a cook. Right. So once I got a cook, then I started, you know, doing shit. But I didn't like selling crack, so I changed it up. To where we why just did, sell. Why, why, didn't, why didn't you like selling crack, Pete? Why didn't you like it? <laughs> because, the, you know, I, I, I seen all the crackheads of what was going on out there, and I was like, damn, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that. But what I did sell is a Coke. They cook it, that's on them. So we was, I was trying to sell vows, and it, which is I, I was killing them out in Baltimore, me and, my, and Nice. But we selling vows and, and doing it like that. But I didn't like the Coke. And then, I, you know, I was really never on the street. I started selling keys. Keys of hair on, keys of coke, you know. And then, you know, even it's a funny thing, because when I'm in jail, niggas be like, you know, everybody's a, a big drug dealer in jail in, in the feds. So they 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 be having these conversations and they'll tell you um mm. how they was doing this and doing that. So I'll be laughing, look, looking at them laughing in my mind. So I'll test them. Mm-hmm. And I'll be like, yo, you selling hair on? Yeah, man, I was getting a bit China white, all this shit. I said, I. So how many, how many grams is in a is in a key of ham on? And that's where I messed them up at. You know what I'm saying? Because they think it's a thousand grams, and it wasn't. But people used to come around me. I guess because they thought I was somebody in the past. They was trying to be uplifted with me. But you can't be a, a, a be yourself. You can't be a a a. a, a, a I guess a ice, a, a big deal, a, a, a peanut king from Baltimore. Mm-hmm. You can't Shout be those, you can't be a, 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 them type of dudes, man. If you was never there like that, Billy Guy, you can't be them type of dudes. These dudes is real dudes, so just be yourself. I would never try to be that. 
what you call it. I would never say, answer a question like, who got money, more money, me or somebody else? How the hell I would know that? That's would I, right. Am I going to knock on the door? Yo, how much you get today? Right. I mean, these dudes with these questions, if you taught it. So I just, That's because you know, they don't have a clue. They just That's look, why I'm here They just be to wanting to talk to someone. not one of them. No, but they just <laughs> want to talk to someone. They'll come to you and ask you some crazy shit. They you know? Have. Who Who you think kill more people, you or uh, this guy? And, like, you're going to go, oh, well, let me call him. Hey, yo, uh, how many bodies you get? Oh, yeah, I got um about 15. Now, I mean, come on, man. What's wrong with these people out here? So I tell you, all they want is entertainment. They just, don't, they don't care think. if they, you know, if they are compromising you or or whatever. They don't care, but they just it's entertainment to them. I don't even think for a lot of these people, I don't think they believe a thing that we say. To be honest with you, they can. You know, a lot of these people, a lot of the people who consume this kind of content, a lot of people who spend their time on the internet listening to other people talk about their life experiences, don't actually have a real perspective. On life, they've gone to school, gone to church, gone to work. That's been their entire life, and there's nothing wrong with that. But they like to interject themselves into conversations like this, normally through the comment box, and talk about what could possibly be and what could possibly be. And it's like you're basing that on on what? That that nine to five you've been working all your life? It's your daddy been working all his life? Your mom been working all their life? Uh, on on the movies, you, you do know that movies are are based on legend and not truth, right? Like, you know, it, it's it's interesting, man. But that that is the majority of the people that this kind of content, you know, hey, reaches. you can't talk about jail. You, you ain't jail. never been in jail. These people talk about, you know, these and these people put these movies up about jail, and none of that shit go on no more. That booty stuff. None of that goes on no more. That's that was before my time, really, the sixties and, and and whatever. But these dudes that they they say getting raped and stuff like that, nah, they ain't getting raped. They ain't getting raped. They They're want participating it. Yeah, in they want it. Activity. And most of them, no, most of them want that, so that's what they're getting. So you can't, you can't uh, um, make these movies and put the fabrication in there to try to scare people from going to jail because none of that shit's happening. What? I don't think it's to scare people. I think it's just unimaginative trope is what they call it. Yeah, it's but like those, just doing things that have become a standard within within movies and shit like that. If you don't do it. People, like like I like I'm saying, like most people haven't had this experience, right? So the majority of the people who are you know talking about this stuff aren't part of the activity. So the 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 majority of them, being the majority of them, whatever they say, because it's so many of them, there's way more of them than there are of us. That becomes the standard. That's what people believe is true because that's what they're hearing the most. And most of that comes from people misunderstanding the, what they're hearing from people who have lived a life and watching a lot of movies and the listening most, to rap records and getting a bunch of lies and bullshit. But the most, the most scary thing you should be worried about, jail is being away from your family. That's right. Doing all that time. But how, how about jail, this? How about... Having to ask another man, can I, can I go to the bathroom? Um, how about imagine the That's sickest you've you. ever been, right? The sickest you've ever been, right? And in your home, in your bed, and how uncomfortable you were. Now imagine that same condition, but you sleep in, you in the shoe. Now you're on a concrete slab and a mattress that's as thin as a Band-Aid. And, and it's cold. Cause you up in the mountains and you hungry and you hungry and nobody gives a damn. Ain't nobody bringing you, you know no tea, you nobody about, rubbing your head and doing you know none of that. You know what I think about though? <laughs> Suppose some guards just left the jail and left you in their shoes. That's right. And don't, and don't something come happened. back. No, they just don't. Yeah, something yeah. in the world happened. Yes. They just don't come back. You That's dead. right. I used That's to right. look at, how can I get out this cell? Bro, I used to be looking at it like that. Bro, when that 2K thing kicked in, mm. and that, that, that was big. Right. They were, oh, the world's going to shut down, all that, whatever, whatever. Like when that kicked in, I was like, yo, so what's going to happen? It, it, even more in, in something in, 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 in a, a more immediate context or more recent context. When that COVID thing kicked in, man, please. Big Cass was like, I'm not going in there. Well, you I'm know. not going in there. And, 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 and that meant nobody's going to work. That means nobody's coming to crack your cell. Nobody's coming to do nothing. You stuck in there. It's, 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 listen, you know, either you're going to be a man, you can't teach a man how to be the man. Either you're going to be strong or you're not. And that's, that's why you get these prosecutors want to give you a, 
asshole for the time, but when they get in trouble, they can't do six months. Nope. They'll go hang themselves. Yep. That's like so, that, like that guy with um with uh uh, uh with with, the, with my bro Isaac Wright, mm -hmm. the prosecutor that was sending all those people to jail, setting them up. He killed himself. And when they caught him, his last words were, "I can't do ten years." Yeah. And shot himself in the head. Yeah. On America's Most Wanted. But they easily could give out that time. So you know Sick. the whole thing. People That's don't scary. know. That's scary. That's worse than anything that people we've that don't know what's going on, in, man. People don't know what's really going on, and you know. They don't, they don't realize that, you know, you have to train yourself to be able to deal with anything. And it's hard because, you know, some people, they can't, if a mouse is in the house, they're jumping on top of the chairs, you know. So my son would tell you, I, I sit like that, I just go and kill him. I don't, see, things that scares me kills people because I'm not easily scared. But I, I know for a fact, that, you know, the jails today is like a hotel. So all these people that be like, oh, I can't do it. This is, man, that's just like a hotel, man. Going to the shoe, breakfast in bed. My uncle taught me that a long time ago. Going to the shoe is breakfast in bed. You ain't got to get up for no counts or nothing. You chill. They say count, fuck you. I ain't getting up. <laughs> what you, you going to do? You just got to worry about them poison. You already put me in jail in jail. You only get in the shower three times a week. You know, if that. So it's you know, you what what can what what can they possibly do next? And they what they did was poison me. And that's why I love ice so much because when I was in Fort Dix and I was real sick and they wasn't really taking care of me. I was defecating on myself and everything. They the, the inmates that was cool was taking my stuff and making them wash it, but then the snitches went and told on that. So ice came down there with a bunch of real brothers from all over, not just New York. And I was in the bed because I couldn't even go to the bathroom. I couldn't go to the shower, nothing without no help. I was that sick. I remember you told me, you said, you said so I, was ice dying. Came, I was dying. I was dying. Yeah. Ice came in there. And they were letting you. Ice came in there and he told the captain and A.W. or whoever, he said, we're not going nowhere. A.W. is assistant warden. Yeah, so you take care, so you take care of our brother. And they told me, Fight, shoot, or die. Fight. You did too much time. And that was it. So I talked to Ice all the time, too. That's another That's one of my brothers. Up, man. Big, That's big, big shout out to Ice. Ice. Ice is my man. That's real. He's a real bro. dude. Always. Because he could have been preoccupied thing. reasonably, understandably, could have been preoccupied. They could have locked him up for the sight of the fire. They could have locked all of them up. Yeah. And he said, we're not going nowhere till he gets the proper treatment. Mm. And, you know, that's my dude. And I love that nigga to death. And yes, you know, sir. got to, you know, you know the even Mackenzie when I came home, Mackenzie Mac Matt. made sure. Yeah, Mac another shout out to him. He made sure. He said the brothers is not taking care of you. He made brothers give up money so I could get the right treatment to get that poison out of me. So a shout out to Mac too. That's my me and Mac, but me and Mac go back. He's they thought he was my brother because we looked at like back in the day. I'm like two years older than him, but. We used to play ball in Stevenson High School. He's, you know, he was always my close. Oh, wow, you go back that far with Mac? Yeah, me and Mac is like brothers, man. Oh, that's dope. Me and Mac is like brothers. You know, all these dudes that knew of me or hung out with me from back in the day, they they family to me, you know? I speak to Big D every other day. <laughs> this is that's how I just spoke to him last week. I spoke to him yesterday. He told him I was coming here. He put me and, me and Big Homie together. Because I'd be letting on, him on know, you know, you know, let what I do because I don't want him to ever feel that stuff I'm saying we didn't talk about first because he's he's involved in it. He said, man, Peter, go go do you, man. You know, we we out the game. We retired. Just, just, get, your, get your shit where it's supposed to be and let the people know what we was about. Right. And they, they, you know, because we wasn't taking pictures until we had a meeting. And I said, well, I'm doing the parties now. We have to take pictures to promote. Right. And all of them said, okay. We just controlled our images. That's all. Yeah, we had to we change We controlled the cameras, the cameraman. I took every slide in them big ass cameras they used to take yeah. pictures of us with. But you I know, took the slide we, with all the negative, we changed everything. 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 We when we was on jet planes, nobody knew about it. Flight private jets. We was doing all this stuff before everybody was doing it. But we we didn't take pictures. We didn't take pictures of us and a whole bunch of money, a whole bunch of drugs, keys. Like we it was never going to happen again. I never took pictures we like never that. Did didn't that. take pictures with guns and money. Like this was my reality. That'd be like taking a pic. Well, it's like what it is now. 
We people take, taking pictures of every moment of their existence. He ain't want to take no pictures. We took one picture, me, him, and MC Ham. I still got that picture. And shout out to MC Hammer too. But we had that one picture we took, and that was it. We don't. We wasn't taking pictures. We ain't start taking. And then they still wasn't taking pictures when I was throwing the parties. I said I had to. So they was like, I right, you do you because we don't really want to be in pictures. And now D don't care. Me and D take pictures. I get, we take pictures now or whatever. But back in then, we you know that was his rule. Yeah, that was the rule. And even though I'm my own boss and he his own boss. I backed that rule up because he was doing that before I came home, and that rule made sense. Yes, sir. A lot of things, D, a lot of the rules we had came from that D. That was a saving grace for me. D. Not, not having pictures of me floating around, that was a saving grace because they D, didn't know what I looked like. D was like, you know about the cars and everything and, and stuff, but D was made a lot of the rules because he was there before us. He came home before everybody. So D is one of the most powerful brothers out there ever. That's right. And he... You know, he just don't want the publicity. He don't want the 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 movie type things. He don't want none of that. You know, he don't even want to be on my documentary. But because he said, you know, everybody knows, but you could tell it. But see, he needs to tell it because he knows some stuff that I forget. Bro. And I keep telling him. And he don't want to do it. I don't know. I don't know. I and mean, you know, we've had that conversation a thousand times yeah, over, he's not gonna over the it. last twenty years and um it, it's 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 really precarious, you know. We you know we're we're not so old that there aren't a lot of people still around who were there. A lot of people who you know were you know uh, trying to stay out the way, whatever. Still trying to stay out the way, you know what I mean. So you you never know. He's had such stupid situations result from the most minute things that I I could see why he would be like that. You know what I mean? When the coke thing kicked in. It was it opened the floodgate and let a lot of people who were not of the ilk get access to the game. Before that, when heroin was the king, um, if you weren't connected to someone who's connected to someone who was touching, and that would be in the city, that might be, you know, maybe five dudes who really was, you know, sourcing that thing. Ain't if no you money. Connected to one of them, you couldn't get it. Ain't no mean. Ain't no money like heroin. You better believe it. If you had blocks. You're getting 100000 a day from every block. And that's why you got the guys like Boy George and all them. They was getting crazy money. Yeah, Ice. George wasn't around very long, but he nah, made a, he didn't last, a, not, yeah, a, but a he lot was, of money. They, he, he, they was getting crazy yeah. money. And you the whole thing is— in the Bronx and the Lamborghini and, and You can't before. compare Havon to Coke. It's, it's a whole different nope. game. The money the money is a whole different game. That's right. Havon, Havon is is the big you and the big boys? That's right. But I, I was born into that. I was just selling keys, though. I couldn't I couldn't put it on the street because I didn't have the right mix. The Spanish brothers that love me, they wouldn't give me the mix because they think I would try to take over. But you know, I'll go out there and get some dudes that say they know the mix, and we'll put this to get quinine, bonita, whatever, uh, morphine, scramble, and, and, and you or, take or, it or. out to you take it out to the street, and the dope people be like, yeah, man, this is good, man. I said, what, from zero to 10, what is it? Man, it's a 10, man. And then you go and mix that shit up to put it on the street to sell now. They be like, nah, man, this ain't the same. You want to beat the dope fiend up because it's the same <laughs> shit you just <laughs> gave him. <laughs> See, so, you know, I went through all that shit. So I stuck I mean, that's my- a very precarious kind of, you know, uh, process, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, you could make a bomb. You could make a fucking bomb in the Quinine Benita, right? You could make a bomb. And then 72 hours later, you got talcum powder because yeah. the client on an eight the you thing. Gotta, you gotta know what you're doing, and I didn't. See, I don't never have no problem saying I didn't know. I don't know what to do. I'm not. I'm not Superman, but I was good with the selling the keys. So I'm making fifty thousand off fifty keys. So I, I stopped. And I was one group. They was they was buying like four keys every five days for me. So I'm making that's two hundred thousand right there from them. So then, you know, then the other people that buy it, because I'm only selling keys I have on. Right. I'm not selling no breakdowns. So, so uh, let's, even with the coat. Let's give them some perspective. Let's give the, the, the listeners some perspective. Uh, at this time, how much was a kilo of heroin uh, wholesaling for? Well, I would get it, I would get it for 50. I sell it for 107. 107 will beat the price of like, I think 110, 112, 115 in that range. But I would take 50 from myself, me and Tim break down, and then I get 7,000, I get to the 
muse, the people that's got to push, take this and go get the money and, you know, do it like that. Right. So once the money's brought to me by one of their lieutenants, I send a lieutenant with the joint or they come and get the joint themselves. But I used to be, I was doing this by myself at first. So I, I'm running around with probably a million dollars and a little bit more in my possession making moves on my own. And then I was like, stick up mentality. I was like, these niggas, somebody gonna get me. Yeah. So I said, I, I gotta get I gotta put my I had to put the team together again. So I start I started recruiting my team and, and then we we start blowing up. And then after that came the coke, which was me and Big D, you know, so managed to some cartel dudes and we start getting our own shit. So now the that that coke era thing with you, um we had this conversation a few years ago, right? It turned out that some some people that we had no idea was touching them things like that, you were fucking with them. And they had they had people thinking that they were getting the material from the guy, the man. And they were the actual ones who were the guy, the man, but they're pretending that they had a boss, mm -hmm. right? Who had who who had all the work or whatever, whatever. But it was actually them. And um, then they got somebody finally, somebody finally flipped on them and exposed them. You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, I'm I'm not too sure which the, people we saw about. You know why? Because I was dealing with, like, the, you know, how can I say? I met a I met a cartel. I mean, Colombians. I dealt with Italians. I dealt with Russians. I dealt with Chinese. So everybody to me, if they connect, they cartel. So my thing is this. You know, D was you 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 know how me and D was. He people cling to him too, you know, because underneath when they find out D's a humble dude, a real good dude, yes, sir. he's no you ain't gonna mess with him on the other side, like get him pissed off. But he's very cool, he's very giving. Yes. So my thing is this. We used to try to get the best prices. So we get somebody that's gonna hit us off with three hundred keys, four hundred keys, whatever, five hundred keys. As long as the prices is good, we can move them in four or five days, six days, because we give them out on the strength yep. and they just have to bring the paper back. But everybody we mess with, they bring that paper back because they know better. And then, you know, the I don't want to say their names. There's a couple of dudes that nice in them, even D, didn't want me to hit because they said, no, you can't trust these dudes. These niggas are going to run off or you're going to have to kill them. But I let the dudes know because there was a couple I did because they was cool with Demencio and, I, and Demencio was my like a brother to me. I like Demencio. Definitely like. talk about Demencio. So, a couple of his, his brothers that was cool with him, he said, "Yo, shoot!" Before you know why he was alive, he said, "Yo, what would you think about hitting so and so?" And I was like, "Damn, he got bad reputations." But they was like, "Yo, but they good dudes." But I'm telling you, you could trust them. They they do that to niggas that suckers, but they wouldn't do that with you. So I said, so when he died. The two dudes he told me, I said, yo, listen, man, I can hit you, but I know you have a reputation. But if you if you cross me, we both gonna die. Because I let them know, I know they can have me killed, because they 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 have that type of pull, but I'm definitely gonna have you killed. So one of them, we became so close, but I don't wanna say his name because he's still incarcerated, he's trying to get home. But he would we'll go somewhere, and I started him out, give him like four or five bricks. He goes somewhere, and he called me and tell me, yo, I'm almost finished, but, but, but you know, when he coming back, I said, man, you ain't got to do that. Just come, when you done come up here, and he never, he never shortchanged me. And they robbed his spot out of town. And he said, yo, shoot, I got to buy it from now on. I said, why? He said, because this nigga's robbed my spot. So I said, get the fuck out of here. You ain't catch him? He said, I don't even know who it is yet. Mm. So he said, I'm going to buy the joints from now. I said, well, this is what we're going to do to make sure you could get back. 
since you lost some of that stuff. You're going to pay for half, and I'm going to give you half. So if you get 10 keys, I'm going to give you five up front, and you're going to pay for five. So you're like, what? That's good. Yeah, I could, I could make my money back then. I said, yeah, go. go." Because I've always been like that. Mm-hmm. If you take a loss, I try to help you, you know, get the loss back. It helps. It helps us to help them. So all the my best. team, all my team, and, and, and this is not saying they, my, they work for me because D and me is on the same team. Nice is on the same team. Cool. You know, with Kuz on the same team. But the whole thing is, Tim, the whole thing is we never like people to come to us with the problem. We like people to come to, with the solution, solution of the problem. Right. So you come to something that's happened, but all right, cool. It, it does happen. Well, how are we going to make it up? See what I'm saying? So some dudes would say, well, if you give me three extra, I'll just give you all the proceeds back on this. Boom, boom, boom. Keep the, like, say you're giving me four keys on the regular. But now give me seven so I can make back the, the loss. Right. And I give you, and I said, all right, that's cool. Now, now you're talking. I'm going to deal with that. So, you know, you had, you know, you had situations like that where we had to help, help brothers get their, their situation back because they're gold mines. So why would you let a gold that's mine right. go down? That's so if right. I got somebody that's, you let a, a penny get he's pumping, he's pumping, he's pumping. All of a sudden he takes a four and I abandon him. What kind of dude I was? I got to come to him and say, all right, listen, what, what you lost? Man, I lost about 600000 All right, we're going to make it piece by piece. We got to piece it off like an apple pie, but we're going to get the money back, so don't stress. Or can you still hold fort, though? If you can still hold fort, That's right. Long then we can do run. it. If you can't hold fort no more, then, you know, I'll go back and I'll discuss it with D and them and Nice and them and all of them and cool, and you, we will have to figure out how can we help them make it up because everybody— Everybody's not going to have a smooth sailing through their whole whole time hustling. It's impossible. That's right. It's very impossible. Especially the more, you know, the, what, what did he say? The more money you have, the more problems. No, the more drugs you have, the more problems. And that's real talk. You're not going to make it without having problems. Police busts, stick-ups, things, um, bad business decisions. Yep. It's a lot of, you know, so, you know, you got to be prepared for the good and the bad. But the... As long as a good overrides the bad, just like a relationship with a broad, you got you got something going good. So you got to keep it. That's why sound decisions have to be made. Yeah, man. We all we all have brains. Everybody, you know, D D is 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 great with knowledge. Nice is great with knowledge. Cool is great with knowledge. So you know, you got four dudes that had brains, and then you know the other dudes that was running with, with us that wasn't running every day. They wasn't the mandatory, but they. They got a piece of the action because they was, you know, started like the two dudes I started hitting. They they became family, and we all looked out for each other. If there's a beef, we come together. If you got, if we need some guns and you got them and we don't have them, you are going to share them with us. And all this come from the Godfather, me watching the mafia movies. But I instituted all that. I brought all of us together because nobody really wanted to mess with nobody from another borough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why these dudes out here going crazy, saying this crazy shit. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from Bronx. I'm from. Mac- Nigga, you from New York. Right. Represent your town. That's why we are so weak in jail because they divide us up. Because when you have a beef with somebody on the West Coast, you West don't Coast. come together, then you hit. You talk about, I'm, shit, I'm from Brooklyn. I ain't helping a nigga from the Bronx. That's the dumbest shit I ever heard. And vice versa. That's right. Because we from New York. That's right. Which was supposed to be the strongest city. Now, you can say, what part of New York? I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from the Bronx. I'm from Manhattan. I'm from Staten Island. That's irrelevant. But for, in the top of it, the, the the conversation, you have to say, I'm from New York. If you don't, you make yourself weaker. And I try to institute this to the young kids. You know, never claim your brother, claim your town. We from New York, which was supposed to be the strongest city, the trendsetter. But we don't got so weak because of stuff like that and the snitching and stuff. People can't follow us no more. Because... Everybody was behind times back in the day, to, to honestly speak it. That's right. That's and right. not to disrespect no other town, because no, I love brothers in other towns. It is what it is. It is, what it, it is. is what it is. But now, we're not. We're not the strongest town at all, because we are so divided up, so jealous, so envious, so grimy towards each other. And that's why we're losing. That's why the other cities is, it's like, I've had to be from here. I've had to be from Florida. I'd rather be from California. I'd be, because 
Nobody I'd ever seen in jail would ever break their this their town down. I'm from DC, nigga. Right. I'm not from Southwest. West, Southwest to this. Northeast. I'm from DC. What part? Oh, I'm from Southwest. But New York does that off the top. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm from Queens. But what town is that? That's why I asked the nigga. So what? What? What town is that? I don't understand. It's, what is Brooklyn? A new a new city? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What is Bronx? A new city? That is so corny. And these younger dudes run with it because they being taught wrong. If you go pick up any good thing from a, a OG, pick up the values. Don't pick up him trying to sun you. Don't pick up him trying to get you to do shit that's going to get you locked up Crash again. Crash dummy. Crash dummy. Pick up the values of what the good things he learned. The bad things... Let it go, just like the Godfather movies. Let it go. I'm respected by all nationalities because of the realness of me. Italians love me. I just did an interview with John Gotti's daughter. You know, um, I have crazy friends. If I, if I had a wedding right now, you would be asking me, yo, shoot, who's some of these people? Because I have them, and you don't see me with them every day. But if I had to... Have something big, they show up. I had a dinner one time, the Italians showed up. I could get the Russians to show up. I could get the Chinese to show up. Because of not because I'm from Brooklyn or from New or Bronx, because I'm a real guy. So f- forget where you're from. Who are you? That's right. You see what I'm saying? Who are you? Forget I'm from this burble. Who are you though? Are you a real dude? Can you be loyal? Can you be trustworthy? Can you be strong when you have to? Can you be a man that has to, and, and knowing that you can't teach a man how to be a man? Are you there charactered? That's right. So the whole thing is, the whole thing is, where New York is so messed up right now. So and it and it eats me up when I'm out there and ninety percent of our brothers are lost. They might not tell you they lost, and why they lost? Not only because of themselves because they listen to these dudes that don't know. That's right. How can you listen to a dude that's going to make you fall off the mountain and he's going to still stand on the side? If I take you anywhere and I'm and we fall because I fell first, I'm never going to tell my people to go to do something that I wouldn't do. And we none of us was never like that. We never like, yo, we got beef. You go take care of it. Nah, <laughs> we got beef. We gonna take care of it. You got all these dudes out here now, finger pushers. Always, yeah. I got a beef with Peter Shoe, but I want you and, and the other guys to go take care of it. All right, why you ain't going? So, something wrong with your finger? Your gun finger? <laughs> well, see, that's why I don't like these dudes. Is following dudes that yep. don't know no better. Yep. Yeah. You know, why do you think there's so there's so many young dudes that are susceptible to that? Why do you think they're so easily influenced by the worst types of characters? Well, all of them, all of them that's like that, because I have some, I have some that's real and they, they, they shop like they, they've been out here mentally for a long time and mm-hmm. the way they I, I get the conversations with them. But, e- but you ask them, they'll tell you that they're rare amongst their own group. But a lot so of these brothers, a lot of these brothers, you ask the question, I'm gonna tell you why a lot of these brothers they see these OGs that was somebody, right? And they feel if they follow their lead, they're gonna get that way. Nah. Every yo, know, with this game, and I tell my son this. This game is not just about knowledge. It's luck. Yeah, a nigga that, could walk outside. I mean, you could walk outside right. our house right now and find a million dollars. And then, oh, I'm a bad motherfucker. I'm the baddest nigga. Right. But you just was right. lucky. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't go to jail for 20 years. You was lucky. Don't mean you was the baddest motherfucker. Don't mean you was the toughest motherfucker. You escaped death. You missed shots. You was lucky. God, everything's on God. But these young dudes out here now, it's watching too much of this bullshit that's on TV and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Instead of realizing the real world. There's a Cinderella world and there's a real world. What part do you want to be in? And these young dudes, and not all of them, because there's some sharp young dudes out I there got too. A few myself. Just like I there's know. some messed up OGs out there. That's facts. You just gotta see who's righteous for you. You gotta see 
who's who be faking, who be telling talking this talk, but they gonna walk the walk. Because if if if, if anybody tell me I got beef, I'm with you. Let's go take care of it. But if you tell me, well, you know, I I can't it, it, but you gotta go, you know. And, what do you mean I gotta go? <laughs> you start you in this beef, but you ain't going? Right. Because those are the ones that be faking, and I, that's, it's not just about beef; it's about everything else they that's do. Right. That's and, right. and these young dudes don't see it. They think like, "Yo, I'm down with this guy. He's that nigga. He might have been that nigga. He ain't no more." Right. So you got to see. You know, yeah. I tell all my homies, all the young dudes, I don't give advice unless you come and ask me for advice. Right. And if you ask me for advice, I tell them, okay. This is what I would do, Peter Shoe. But don't mean it's good for you. It might not be good for you. You might have to do something else because of your whole thing is a little different than how Peter Shoe used to do it. Do it to your gut feeling. You know, you got it, you got somebody that you don't trust in your family. Back up. Look at it different. See what's going on. Don't do what we used to do back in the day. Because it's another ever. The hustle game is different. That's right. Dealing with females is different. Yep. Girls is toxic out here. I don't care. They, 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 I don't care what's going on. Ninety nine percent of the problems that happen when niggas go to jail and niggas get killed, it's over a girl. It's over a female. Everybody know that. And then the the break, what kills me is these guys kill each other or whatever they do. One goes to jail. One One's lives. dead. One. I mean, one dies. <laughs> She's going to the next man. That's right. She's moving to the next man. Now, how foolish do you, if, uh, are you just killing these girls because they breaking up with you? Man, I would have killed about 40 girls because girls was leaving me like crazy because they caught me cheating back in the day. Uh, you know, and suppose I just killed them. I'm going to jail and I still lose the girl. Where's the, see, the train of thought that's in our minds. I don't think there's much of a train of thought. It's just thoughts. Nope. No train. There's no continuous, you know, idea that's developing and progressing to a point. It's just I think a thing and I do it. Yeah, I think it and I do no it. Because you got a gun. Because I thought it. Because you could pick up a gun now. I mean, that's the easiest thing to do to shoot a nigga. You want to impress me? Shoot a nigga that's shooting back at you. Right. You know, all these <laughs> niggas out here. There's, see, they don't even know the difference between murderers and killers. There's two. Di there's two different topics to that, and they don't know the definitions. See me. A girl leave me, and she's cheating on me. I'm gonna tell her who you fucking with. What? He getting that type of money? Who hit us both? Hit me off too. Get get money from both of us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't gonna be. And she be like, "What the hell? You don't care that I'm cheating? Nah. That's part of the game. That's your coochie. That's that's part of the game. Yeah, that's yours. That's I don't own that. I don't own that. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying so, to manage this thing I got. I'm I different. Know. Girls be like, girls that know me now know I'm different. I don't chase no coochie. Never I don't. Have. My thing is this: I love everybody. I've never chased. I've never chased. Never. But the whole thing, the whole thing is, some of these females, they get you in situations, and they don't realize how serious it is. And then sometimes they get killed. Yep. Because if if me and you get a beef over her, and you kill me and you go to jail, I got family members. Right. Well, how did how did Peter Shoe get killed? Well, we can't get him. Well, we could get her. Pete, you had, unfortunately, a good amount of experience with snitching, people telling on you. You definitely would know what the definition of a snitch is. What is the definition of a snitch to you, brother? Now, everybody has an interpretation. All right. Me, I'm only telling you what I think. If you're in the game, if you're selling drugs, or you doing anything, in that world, you cannot snitch. Now, if... But wait, what if you're, you and your partner, y'all rocking, y'all getting bread, say you catch a situation, you get stopped one night, you got your gun on you, you locked up, and you got to go and sit, like, you know, for whatever time you got to sit, and your guy, who you tell to look out for your wife while you're gone has sex, start having sex with your wife. 
You can't. That's a beef you got to handle when you get home. <gasps> you know what I'm saying? Unless you're just going to have somebody knock them off while you're in jail. But that's not snitching, though. That has nothing to do with snitching. That's just being a grimy dude because he shouldn't be talking to your girl. Now, if... But it's not justified if he betrays you like that? No, nah, it is justified. You know why? Because... Well, me personally, I cut a, I cut a girl up when I, I got to do a stretch because I don't want the headaches or the challenges behind that. But realistically, if you go to jail and she moves on, why move on with your, with your homie? Move on with somebody else. There's millions of dudes out there. Why? Your closest friend? Nah, that's not cool. Well, yeah. I mean, they do it in the movies. But I, my theory is, no. I would never, like, if I would never mess with your girl. Never. I would never mess. Now, we had a little thing over that before, you know, when we was home and, and niggas was going at everybody's backyards. But we had to come up, me and D had to come up with a, a, a rule and nice because the crew don't do that. But us three, we, we, we male hoes at the time. So we came up with a rule. It can't be your immediate girl. So nobody could talk to your immediate girl. But the strays out there that you're dealing with, side chicks, yeah, you could talk to them. Like the kids said, they for the streets. Yeah, but if it's your main girl, no, you can't talk to him. So if if you go to jail, you can leave anything with me with that girl, and everything would be straight. I used to joke with Nice all the time. I used to tell Nice, if I'm on the, if they shot me twenty times, I'm on the, I'm on the, on the uh, operating table, and I'd be like, Yo, where's my girl? And they'd be like, Oh, Nice took her home. I'd jump off that boat. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I, he said, he's like, you a piece of shit. <laughs> you believe I would do that? I said, yes. Now, D might not, but still, no, I might jump off the table too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, you, know, you know, it's just it's just that because we had some bad girls. And I know, and you have a bad girl, so you got girls that look so good, a nigga have to be looking at her. You know it. You around you every day. Like, who the fuck don't want a woman? Who wants a woman nobody wants to look at? Like, like um, you know, I always say Danita because she was one of she's my favorite, like beauty wise. And she's up there with that top tier with Halle Berry and um Vanity and all of them to me. Mm. Now, everybody used to want to talk to Danita. Tanisha too, same type of woman. But my thing is this, I could never have Danita around me and, and my team that wanted to down low on the DL. But they they know the law. You violate, we eliminate. So they, that's a, that's something you tested them. That's like the same thing when you asked me way back. Uh, you have to know you can go to jail. You have to know you, if you hustle. So you have to know you can get killed fucking with somebody's main good. Stealing from them. We had commandments and a lot of them D, D came up with, not the girl shit, but no stealing, no jealousy, no envious, none of that shit, you know, but the whole thing is, it's real. That's being a real dude. If I could turn my way away from somebody's coochie, because you my dude, that I'm a good dude. And it's hard. It's hard. Because these girls look, and it's harder now. These girls got crazy, amazing bodies. But back in the day, it was hard. But if you talking to a Danita, a Tanisha, a Jatan, a, a, a Chrissy, or any of them top-tier women, and you go to jail, these niggas going to be on them like leeches. Because they bad bras. All of them girls was bad bras. Let's keep it real. They beautiful, naturally beautiful. They again, they they deserve everything of the 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 saluteness. And my taste is the best. I always felt that. So, and I know you feel that. So, if I think a woman is a is a goddess, she's a goddess, and they were goddesses. No doubt about it. They had they were beautiful on the outside. Beautiful on the inside, you know. And you can't get mad at them want to get that to get that nigga with the money. Because they deserve it. They look good enough. That's what these girls is doing now. They so they was a trendsetter for these young girls getting their bodies done. Sure enough. So they could get these niggas. Sure enough. Sure but they enough. could get the niggas naturally because they had they had that pizzazz back in the day. So I I like them girls. So so a, a snitch, the the, the definition your definition of a snitch. snitch. A snitch cannot be an old lady looking out the window saying, so you shoot me and, and tell on you. That's not a snitch. And, and you know, I, 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 I had to really reevaluate because I used to think that too. But I said, no, nah, that's not a snitch. Only if they in the game and they know the repercussions of the game and the circumstances, then they a snitch. So 
I don't even know this dude is six nine, right? And six nine is supposed to, you know, he claimed why he snitched. And I would I would be on his side up to one point. This is what kills him. And he don't realize it because he's young. He's and, he, a kid. And, and, and he's, he's a square kid. And, he, and he's a square but he was a good dude mm-hmm. until he starts snitching. And they was taking advantage of him. But the real reason why he falls under the snitch label is not because he snitched, because he was part of the gang. Yep. If you got into that gang and that part of the gang, gang if, if that's true, because I still don't know the whole particulars, but if that's true, then yes, you wasn't supposed to snitch. That's right. But he claims that all the shit that happened to him, that's why he has um, he has the right to have told on him. Right. They try to kill him. They try to fuck his girl. They try to, so many things. And I understand that. But I told you what happens when a nigga try to mess your girl before you, you get him. You get him or you have somebody else get him. Now, them trying to kill him, same thing. You in jail. You come home, you get him killed. But for you to make a, and and this is, you know, he don't know me and he he might take it the wrong way, but for you to make a excuse for telling Period? No, you're wrong, kid. And you're only wrong because you joined that organization. That's right. So you cannot say that I didn't snitch. And, you know, and that's what bothered me about, and, and that getting off of 6 9 going to regular snitches. They get mad, and I'm talking about snitches, period, now. They get mad when you blow them up for being a snitch. Yeah. How can you get mad? You did that to yourself. You can't get mad. You can't want to, uh, you know, because you're a tough guy. Oh, I want to, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that. Nigga, do it. Bring it. Because you a snitch, you want to go after another nigga? No, you snitched on a nigga. And you wrong. You know, you wrong. The court system is so terrible right yes. now. Drug dealers get a crazy time. More time than the most a dude pedophile, child molester. You know, how do they get less time? They're doing the damage that's damaging these people forever. That's right. Are you but less the kid? That's they always going to have society that. society for generations. They try to switch, you know, uh, um, come down on gay people. Gay people only hurt themselves if they hurt themselves. That's their decision. So they have to deal with God on that. But these people are, are touching other kids. These are touching kids and molesting and raping. Them. Stealing their how they not get? How they not getting... More time than a drug dealer. That shit is. That shit is well, you know, I, 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 I would say you didn't you force the person an to use the drug. I, I tell you a, a, a dime of crack. You smoked it. I didn't tell you you better smoke it. I didn't put the gun to you and say you better smoke it. But they get more so, time. I mean, so I mean, you've had a lot of time to think about that. You've had a lot of first hand experience with that situation, being in prison for twenty some odd years. You had to have thought about it. What? has been your conclusion as to the why that is. <laughs> I'm still searching for that answer. Well, consider this. Because, because you know, I, they're still being done. I can't come up with some kind of antidote to the problem. Consider this. Sometimes the simplest answer is the, is the right answer, right? So consider this. If you are um, a system that is all about the control of resources so that you maintain the power and the status quo, and you have people who are circumventing that system by making large sums of money and not paying you a percentage in the, in the form of a tax, then if that gets out of hand, you're going to have a problem maintaining your system. So the way, the way you're speaking right now, when did, you, when did your, your, uh, your third eye open to all of this while, while you were incarcerated? You got shop. You get shopper when you're customer because you ain't got nothing else yes, to do. Yes, being still. But you, but you know, yeah, you get. I think you get a little shopper, you know, because you know they say as our age progress, we get wiser. So as you see things going, you get wiser. Not as a rule. Not, but that's what they say. It doesn't have to happen for everybody because some people is dumb as a brick still. But my thing is this, you know, you supposed to have stability. You supposed to have stability. And and and, and, uh, and uh, 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 eyesight of what your life is going in your thirties. If you don't have that, then it's you're struggling. Yes. Because you can't wait till you're sixty, seventy years old and say, "I think I'm seeing the light. The light's almost over." <laughs> <laughs> like the way they kill them motherfuckers now, the light may get turned off. <laughs> you, 
you know? So That's real serious, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, real, though. Men, as men in, in the space that we are in, in this, this uh, you know, journey, we have that perspective because we've made it this far. Trying to import that insight into someone who can imagine what 60 years on this planet looks like it, it's, it's a blessing to get there. It, it, yeah, they, they, they can't imagine what it looks like if they're 20 years old, you know, so it's difficult for them to understand that um, when you start talking in a way where you're, you know, speaking more to caution and speaking more to responsible behavior and speaking more to thinking about the things you're doing now and not just the impact they're having on your circumstances now, but also what those same decisions will have, what impact they'll have on your future. Right. The decision you made in 1984, you grew to understand by 1994, 2004, that this situation I'm experiencing right now was directly impacted by a decision I made in 84 when I wasn't even considering I mean, look, this. I did 20. I did 21 years. So I did 21 the years. The decision, I, the decision I made to get down and dirty cost me 21 years. I miss my kids growing up. And that hurts me the most because my children are special to me. And I, I, my son gets on me all the time. He gets, he's, he's, he's pissed at me and he, he has the right to be. But I always tell him, I didn't abandon you. I was taken from you. It's a big difference. I would have never left your side. I used to go see him every, every night or every other night when he was a baby because I used to like to wake him up when he's sleeping. But my thing is this. Like you said, the decision you make will cost you, could cost you later on the rest of your life. And that's the truth. And you have sex with a girl and she gives you AIDS. You got that the rest of your life. Unless, you know, there is a cure for all that, but they don't tell you. But I know there's cure. Absolutely. But, but the whole thing is, you know, your decision making has to be better. And that's where it's not being done more so now. Because... These young girls is having all these babies when they're young. I know you love kids. You love children. I love children till they get older and start acting their mouths. But anyway, <laughs> but you done ruined your life. You ain't going to be able to do nothing no more. You got three kids. You in the house. And it's hard. So now, you know, damn, all, you, all your life you dreamed about, oh, damn, I want to go to Dubai. I want to go to Hawaii. You ain't going to do that. Your money don't call for it. Your hand don't call for that unless you're rich. So that's why the dudes that come home from jail, most of these dudes come home messed up because there's no background for them, no backbone. There's nobody to help them out. And nobody's and they, trying to help them out. And they never really were a part of society. A Listen, lot of them, you, you talk about, uh, you know, when, when I was, uh, before the pandemic, when I was going into the prisons and, and, and working in there five days a week, 12 hours a day, um, I was in there with them. So this was my prison experience and I'm an analytical person. So I'm paying a, a, a particular level of attention to the psychoemotional impact that this daily existence that some of them gotten quite accustomed but to. But you were still able having. to go home. Right. And that, is, that was something I was never able to separate my, myself from. I, would, I was never able to separate myself from the fact that I could at any moment, barring anything going, because you know if something happens while you're in there, you're stuck in there. Mm -hmm. Right. But. Barring anything like that, I could get up in the middle of this class right now, walk out of here, and never come back here again. And nobody can say anything except for the people who gave us there was a dude, the money. There was a dude, right? But there was a dude. He did eight years in jail. He did the whole eight around me. So when he came, when he's going home, he came to me and said, yo, unk, yo, unk. I said, what's up? He was from Staten Island. I said, yo, what's up? He said, yo, what am I going to do when I get home? You got somewhere where I could get a job? I mm. said, you wait till now to ask somebody this? Mm. And my man clowned yeah, him. I guess that was a cool conversation topic prior to that. And right? my man clowned him. My man clowned him and said, hey, you know what you could do? You could get your squiggy, squidgy go in midtown and wipe all the windows down. You'll get paid. He's like, you know what he said? And he was joking. You know what he said? Hey, that's not a bad idea. And I looked at him like, oh, my God, he's lost. He'll be back. Because... You thought that was a good idea? You going to do squidgy work? Well, maybe he had an expanded perspective oh, of it. Maybe yeah. he thought about the fact that Manhattan has the most amount of windows 
of most <laughs> any damn city. So if you can get you a couple of contracts, you're talking about thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars, maybe. Yeah, after that's you did what that time, if the, after you did that time, that's what you want to do. You might as well go to McDonald's at work and say, "Hey, when I get promoted to fries, I'll be good." Well, you know I wouldn't think he was going to try to wash him himself. <laughs> you, get a, you get a team no, of he's people like of yourself who just came home and can't get employed. He's the type of person to go wash it himself. I know, oh. but the whole thing is the whole thing is just it's just crazy out here, man. You know so. It is what it is. I mean, people just got to, you know, the, the, the thing with this particular interaction, this particular section of what we're talking about, this was an opportunity to try to import something, uh, you know, with uh, a practical application. You know, it's cool to listen to the stories and they're entertaining and they take you away from your reality, whatever it might be for the period of time you're watching. But if all you can come away with after giving this much of your time and your attention to something is some anecdotes and some stuff that you can now go to your social media and talk about and comment on like you know something, which is what a lot of them do. They get on, they watch us, and then they go on to other platforms and other pages and they start interjecting their commentary as though they know what they're talking about because they've listened to men like us have conversations. I ask, I ask God all the time, right, you know, why am I able to be depressed because depression is for everybody. It's hitting everybody, especially now. The pandemic made it worse. But why am I able to endure more pain than these other people that just go and kill themselves or think of suicide thoughts and all that? And, you know, experience. Yes. That's the answer. Yes. Experience of going through things and able to adjust in your life. Everything you do, you have to adjust. Everything's not going to be peaches and cream. So... You have bad days, you have bad months, you have bad years. But if you're not able to go going back to a, a prosecutor when he's able to put us in jail, but when the shit hit the fan on him, he ain't able to go to jail. You have to build your body, mind, and soul to where you're able to deal with catastrophes. That's right. The same way you deal with the Bravo stuff. That's right. Be prepared for the worst because the worst happens too. That's and right. And, you know, what is the worst... Everybody can look in the mirror. What is the worst? Because everybody has their worst opinion. So the worst could be, uh, oh, I lose my house. The worst could be, oh, I lose my job. The worst could be, I could lose my parents. Anything could be the worst to you. But you have to build your a force field, like Star Trek, when they used to say, Captain Kirk, this force field is down. You know, the same thing <laughs> happens to your body. So you have to say, okay, Peter, shoot, the force field is down. Okay. What would Captain Kirk do? You got to do something to fix it. And that's what people don't realize in their lives. So they just be like, I'm going to get by this. I'm going to get by this. And it, it's hard. It's really hard. And I've been there, so I know what the people, listen, man, I did 21 years straight, 21 years, eight months straight. I came, they tried poison me in jail. I died twice. They had to bring me back. My mother died all in the same 20-something years. To me, you couldn't do worse unless you just took me off the earth. See what I'm saying? But I had to, okay, I got to 21 years. How am I going to do this? Okay. I work out religiously, which I did. Stay sucker free, which I did. Learn to write movies, which I did. Stay off of that BET, calling people. The DNA will tell you, I don't call nobody because I don't want nobody to say, yo, yo, shoe, yo, we just went to, we just went to that. Black tie fan for Vopal Dope. They had the baddest girls. Meanwhile, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in there doing 21 years. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. Thank so I had to- Send me some pictures. Yeah, it's, I got to shut all that down. I don't even want the pictures because then I started getting stressed. So what I did, I had to train my mind to just exercise for health. I can't be a drug dealer no more. Learn to write movies. What does you mean learn to write, learn to write movies? Well, George George Jung taught me how to write movies for um Oh, Blow. learn to write movies. Learn to write movies. George oh. Jung, the movie um yes, Blow. Yes, I know. Blow. Yeah. He taught me how to write screenplays. Dirt, uh, what did, and I took it called George uh, uh Dirty Dirty George, Stinky George. Well, they he became they said, they said, before they said I knew he him he wasn't when I knew him I didn't know he was a rat. He I found out he was a rat years later, but I I had disassociated myself with him. Now that you you've mentioned the amount of time you've done um, let's talk a bit about how you got that amount of time. 
because you had two trials. Three trials. Three trials. Two hung juries. Two hung juries. They so cheated Two that. situations where they where a jury could not uniformly conclude that you were guilty of what the government was charging you with. Mm-hmm. And that the point that you had the second hung jury, an offer was made to you. Or well, three times it was made. So what was the offer? The first one and was why seven, didn't you take it? Because. What was the offer? The, the first one was 17 years. Now, I got arrested on something called reverse sting. Reverse sting. Now, reverse sting. That's when somebody tries to buy drugs from you. They act no, like they want to buy drugs. No, they were selling drugs to me. The federal government. Oh, was, right, right. I'm supposed sorry. to sell drugs to me. Now, to me, which is illegal. And now they're saying it's illegal now after I did all that time. But So to entice a person and say, hey, hey, I've got drugs. I've got great drugs at a good price. A person that, my, I think this is probably more likely now to happen, a person yeah. that doesn't have any involvement in drugs, but at this point, everybody knows how much money can potentially be made in drugs. So anybody might look at that as an opportunity. Well, I'm just going to do this. They and got them for that. I'm going to just do this real quick. I'm going to turn right around and give them to Pete. Or, Pete or, got them. Or Pete know how to move it. Or if there's a drought. If there's a drought, you're oh, going to yeah, be scrambling yeah, to grab yeah. anything to keep your blocks down. Oh, yeah, boy. So I needed that. That drought had motherfuckers making some very bad decisions. So what happened Those was- Those droughts. I, I I couldn't believe that I could get convicted. And DeLorean, the car dude, yep. he had the same actual case- with actual drugs in the case. In the suitcase. And he never got convicted. Now, because I'm whatever you want to call me, black and Chinese or, or whatever. You know you got, got one convicted. drop of one drop of this 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 great melanated blood in you, baby. You you got and, the and whole they, package. They you killed, black. No, but I'm <laughs> I'm not I had to say that because I wasn't white. So they they what they did to me, they um railroaded me my third trial. Because I had two hung juries and you know, it's a lot too. I could go on and on about this, but we have so much to talk about. I'm gonna keep it short. But the whole thing is, I didn't believe that you could get a reverse. You you could go to jail for entrapment, and that's what the name of it is. Mm-hmm. Entrapment. That's right. It is. So after the the first hung jury, the second hung jury, they offered me five years. So I said no, because now I'm, if I get one more hung jury. They have to throw the case out or give me income tax evasion. So I, I shot the dice and I lost and I ended up getting it 20 something years. But the whole thing is I wouldn't have changed it any other way because I know deep down inside in my heart a reverse thing was illegal. And now they're saying it's illegal. So, 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 so you can't. Doesn't that put you I in can't get my, you can I sue can't, with them? No, nah, because it's not retroactive. It, it would probably be now so you could, you could, they can't do it. But. They're not going to keep themselves open for the, the the left hook for this lawsuit. But anyway, that's what happened to me. That's why I fought. Now, if I would have been dead and stinking, I probably would have took some time. Explain to people what dead and stinking means. I mean, they that's, got that me like this. From our, With the drugs our in years. my hand like this, I'm on the camera. You know what I'm saying? They like got they called me like, DeLorean. Yeah. Because like he was on camera with yeah, the I case might, cocaine I might, in I might, I might have looked at the five years and took it. I wouldn't have took that 17. That's for damn sure. If I could do 17, I might as well do the 21. But when they got to the five, I didn't take it because of that. And people was like, Peter, why you didn't take that five? But, you know. Yeah, we always saying that. Everybody's saying it, but the whole thing is you have to look at the whole picture. The rest thing was illegal. I knew that in my heart. Because I told the judge, I'll go to jail. But you got to take the police to jail, too. Because... If they, I was, if they, if I pretended to be a drug dealer, I mean, if, if, if I'm a drug dealer, then they can't be pretending to be a drug seller. They had to be a drug seller. So let's all go to jail. That's I right. told her that. That's right. What's that on the that would be, other, under any other circumstances, that would be called a conspiracy, Man, I, I, brother. I ain't got no problem going with them. We all go because they could never sell me drugs. There was never no drugs. That's why the new, there's a new case out now. I'm, I'm we're waiting to see what happens where 841 was illegal because. You have to know the actual drug, and you have to know that it's that drug. I might have known that it was supposed to be cocaine, but I didn't. Know, I don't know if that's what they bought. They could have bought oregano to, to the to the scene of the crime. You understand? And that's what the case is out there now saying. You have to be not just know that you're going to buy cocaine. You have to be 
know that there is cocaine and it's not fake cocaine or nothing. And I was not able to do that. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, and you're talking, when you say case out there right now, you're talking about the situation that occurred a little while, uh, I guess about three years ago now? No, two months ago a case came out. I'm, I'm, they still researching it for me. Uh, I forgot the name. United States versus somebody. The Supreme Court. This um, Mr. Thomas, because he's giving a leave. He, he said all 841s is illegal. So if that's true, and they look at that, everybody went to jail with 841s. So if that's true, and mine is even more so, because other 841s have actual drugs or have something to coexist where they did, they had drugs on them before. They didn't never have drugs on me. These are some new people, which is the police. They never came with no drugs. I never could have been able to see that I was getting cocaine because it's not cocaine. There's nothing there. They couldn't prove that what I did in the past reflected to this because they didn't know me from the past. So if me and you did drug deals back in the day, they don't know that. They have no no nothing to go with. It doesn't relate to this case. And that's why I got, I you know, if, if I went, if that's good, then I got a lawsuit. for They have to pay me for 20-something years, but I got to wait till these people do that, analyzing it and see if it, it affects me. Because the U.S. thing is is definitely a uh, 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 a bad um, right. charge. I mean, it's enticement. So, do you know how much approximately uh, a, a case costs the government to uh, prosecute? What, what are the numbers like? Do you have any oh, idea? To prosecute me? Like, anybody? Yeah. No, yeah. no. I don't know. I don't know how much it costs them to prosecute people, but. It can be up. It, it's it can, up there. It's, it, it's easy. It can be upwardly of it's a, up there. A, a million. It's up there. That's why they try to get you to million. take a plea. You know, they try to take you take a plea, a cop out, and to blow trial, to go to trial. You cost them affairs, a lot of money. Bro. To go to trial, I think they win the percentage is 99 point something. They don't lose. So I was the first one to ever have a hung jury in Long Island. You know, so I can stand up and get saluted for that. Who cares? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I was the first one to have two on juries in Long Island. We talked a lot about your uh, prison experiences, and I, I really do. My will is that people will pay as much attention to the uh, the daily existence in prison that you're sharing um, as they are to, you know, the the party and the BS. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the glamour and all that, you know? Um, and now that we've given people, you know, this insight into your experience in prison in the, in the 21 years and all that, whatever, whatever, um, there are people who will be watching this and they'll be saying, well, well what happened? <laughs> the, 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 the feds pretended to be drug dealers and tried to, and, 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 and trapped you into, uh, uh, you know, this this purchase from them, whatever, whatever. But what happened? What led up to this? How did you come into contact with these agents that were uh, presenting themselves as though they were drug dealers? Well, you know, the whole thing is, um, everybody talks about the Madonna thing and stuff like that. And, you know, they always talk about, oh, Peter, you, you, you screwed Madonna. You No, she fucked me. See, theoretically, and I'll get to that. But, you know, the celebrities I was around, Madonna's just a token, you know. I had, I mean, Zip, Zip told me I could have got Halle Berry for five Gs when we was in Vegas. Janet Jackson tried to pull me on stage Von one Zip. time. Yeah, Eric Von Zip. Zip. So, 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 Janet Jackson tried to pull me up on stage one time, but I, I had my gun on me, so that's why I didn't go on the stage. And d &M was like, Yo, why are you going to go up there? You know, she was bringing somebody from the audience to the crowd. Mm -hmm. And I was walking through. I had my full length mink, my Rolex on, my Rolex stuff, necklace, and, you know, the mink baseball hat. So I was I was bling-blinging. So she tried to bring me up, but I didn't go up there because I had the gun on me. And she might have felt the gun and said, she oh, my God. She was doing that, that thing that she used to do, dance on you and all kinds yeah, of stuff. She, yeah, she, she, record, she recorded. She recorded. Told security, grab me. They, you know, that's why they go up there. So Chaz, oh, shout out to Chaz, man. That's, I miss my man. I do Black too, Black Hand man. Production. Peaceful so journey. He was bro. with us too. It was me, Chaz, and Big D. 
And then we had our other lieutenants and right hand people in, in other seats. But anyway, so it wasn't only about Madonna. Let me clarify that. Right. Madonna was just, a, you know, we were trying to wash our money through her, and that's all we was trying to do. And we had a rule, whoever, if we need something done, if, if you're picked, you have, to, you have to do it. So, you know, you have to make the sacrifice for the team. So I had to right. take, take I had to, for the team. Yeah, you had to no, take them from the team. So I ended up messing with her, but I was really trying. I wasn't even into snow bunnies, and I was trying to get my money washed. Our money was. We were trying to give up close to ten million a month. So, how how did that? Like a lot of people hear about money laundering from movies and shit like that, whatever. But people don't have a clue uh, about any of the, even the most minute intricacies of laundering money. Well, that's different ways. I mean, so you seen Scarface, and you you did go to the bank. That's the probably Eight duffel bags. Yeah, of money. that probably Madness. might be the biggest way. But I was trying. We was trying to, you know give her money, and then she give me checks, like, you know, I'm working for her, something like that. Uh, 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 we figure out how we she gonna get the money to me. But 10 million? The fuck is well, you doing for 10 million? Well, for Madonna. That's why I'm saying we had to figure out ways, but that's what that's what everybody else wanted to put together at, at the time, because it wasn't just all my money. It's, it's all of our money. So, but the whole thing is, you know, she was cool. We ain't had no problem. She wasn't no headache. We was cool. So but what, what she the just hell wanted happened? to get. She wanted first of all, she wanted. She was trying to get pregnant by me, and I I already had a girl, so I didn't want to do that. And second of all, how um, you keep running around with Madonna low though? Well, we wasn't low all the time. I took her to the Ruckers. Right. I took her to certain. So girl had to know that. I took her to Harlem to do the video she made. She made a video called The Secret. And if you look at the the video, the secret, everybody could go look at that. You'll see a Chinese looking dude in there. That was supposed to be me, and I was supposed to get one hundred fifty thousand to do that. But my girl had found out about Madonna, so I took my girl to St. Martin's and the Wuba, and I ended up breaking up with her because she kept crying about this Madonna shit. And you know, I can't take but so much. But anyway, that I missed the video. So then when I came back, that's when Madonna got mad at me because I'm trying to help you get out the game, and you so. But one thing went to another, and I told fuck her too. So, you know that's how it was. But yeah, she's the one that that put the the informant on me, Arlene Brickman. Did she know that Arlene was a, a yes? A inf she knew. Yes, Arlene Brickman testified to court. She told Arlene Brickman to set me up because you rejected her. Because I was yeah, I wasn't. I, I guess it's that it's, it's another theory I had, but I haven't. I don't have it on paper, so I can't. Disclose it, but I think somebody put it on to me. So somebody if I ever find that out, yeah, if I ever find that out, he was another, a, you know. Did just, he ever? Did he ever get exposed as being a cross artist in, a, yeah, in another yeah, aspect? Yeah. So you notice this is a, in I his think it could so be him, called character. But I don't want to put his name up because I don't know for sure, right. and I, I don't like, I don't do none of that. Uh, let's pretend. No, I, if I don't have it on paper, but he's a piece of shit, and I stopped my man from doing him a long time ago. But anyway. He, I think he put her on me. But anyway, besides the point of him putting her on me, put her being, she, she, being she Madonna. Went yeah, Madonna. You think that this character yes. potentially put Madonna yes. on you? Yes. Why, you? Do you think that Madonna was compromised at some point, and that is how she goes? I you know, because you think, know, I think she did it before. I think she uh, definitely told on somebody before. But but, I, well, I don't know all the particulars why she did what she did, but you know, it's it, it's done. I moved on, but back in the day, I would want to kill her. But now I don't even think about that shit because, A, everything's for a reason. God might have saved me from other things because there were three other cases that came after mine that I could have been tied into. Right. And that was time. So that they were trying to implicate me with. But, you know... I'm not a fan of hers because of that, because to me, I used to say it was over me not wanting to be with her like that. But if that's the case, then I really would have been mad at her. But now, you know, I had a dream. And, you know, everybody had their dreams. But premonition-wise, I believe she was put up to get me. From a coward, and straight up and down, 
And what made me think that is like you said, did he cross over? So when he crossed over, then I said, yeah, I believe. And he was doing it for a while. I believe. They always are. But it's time I we believe find out. it was a setup to get me. But that's here there because I can't prove it. I did the time. The shit's over with. You know, I have nothing to do with her right now at all. And I don't I don't even hate her no more because what it is, what it is. And, you know, if she did it for that reason, because this nigga put, put it on me, then, uh, like you said, if she did it because she got caught doing something and had to turn in some niggas, then, you know, it is what it is. So that's the game. That's the game. And you and can't I, you can't pl- claim sour grapes and this ain't fair and somebody told on me so I take it I take it and wear it into the chin and you know. But I would never tell on nobody. My name will always be good. I'll never tell on nobody. I'll never if they was looking for you to kill you, and they torture me, my body be all over the place because they would never get the name from that's me. That's right. Because that's the way I was brought up and. I'm not the toughest nigga in the world. There's, there's a lot of tough dudes out there. But my loyalty and my principles will never change because I believe in what I believe in. And, like, if she really cared about what she did, she could have helped me. She could have, you know, but I believe she has something slowing me down on what I'm trying to achieve because she's, she's, she's that powerful to where she got, with that elite people that's over her, that could get things done. But I'm not even mad at that. Or prevent things from getting yeah, done. Yeah, prevent. So if she feel, if she feel that's how she want to do it, after she got me that 20-something years, cool. Because karma's, karma's crazy comes back. God going to take take care of all my business. I used to, that's right. so I'd be at these His clubs. jobs, put them in front of cameras. We was in, Bentley, um, Crane Club was so crowded, it was Chaz's birthday. Shout out to him again, I miss him. So every time I think about Chaz, I, I, I get sad. But we go around, it was too crowded. I was supposed to take this girl off. Actually, I wanted to try to get Tanisha. So it was her birthday too, I think. But I leave. I go around the corner to the Crane Club. I mean, to Chaz Wilson's. It's crowded, crowded, you know. So I go to the bar, I'm talking to a couple of girls. And then um, what happened? This guy come over, and he goes, yo, Madonna wanted to meet you. So I said, tell Madonna I like my women like I like my coffee, black. <laughs> so <laughs> I was joking about. So when he went back to him. So I continued talking to the girls. So somebody tapped me on my shoulder. I turned around, it's Madonna. <laughs> so she, I, said, I said, oh, shit. So she said, that was very racist, that, a statement that you said. Oh, shit, word. I said, I was just joking. You know, she's like, he said, I like your eyes. She said, I said, thank you. So she said, will you come over to the table for me for a little while? I said, all right. So I went over there. We started talking, boom, boom, boom. And she said, um, you know, what you doing later? I said, I don't know. She said, um, can, you, can we exchange numbers? I changed my number, boy. She said, well, I got to leave. But uh, I hope you call me and stuff. So she kissed me on my cheek and she left. So I went back around the corner to Chaz's party. And what happened was, what happened was um, somebody shot up in the air. I don't know what the hell was going on. Preem was in there with us. It was mm-hmm. Preem, Big D, Chad, everybody was in there. So they shot up in the air. Scooter and them was there. Scooter. It's my guy. So they shot up in the air. school in years, man. Uh, yeah, I miss him. I can't wait till he come home. I, he's a good dude. So they shot up in the air. Everybody ran outside. Now, I got my gun on me. But I don't know what's going on. So I'm calling out names to see if everybody right. D, D, I'm calling out D. He, he was already outside. Prem heard me. So I said, Prem, what's up? He said, yo, I don't know. Somebody shot. I said, I, I, I said, I, I got my thing out. So y'all follow me. But, and P. Diddy was in there too. I had to tell him, yo, he running back and forth. I grabbed him and said, yo, 
stay down before you get shot. So when we going out, the club, everybody's outside arguing about what went on. So the girl I wanted to take off, she gone. So I um I get the beep on the people. And um I call back, say, yeah, who is this? She said, Madonna. She said, What you doing? I said, I ain't doing nothing now. So because we all outside get ready to go home. I had to tell these niggas, everybody go home, your niggas drunk. They talk about shooting each other over some dumb stuff. Cause it was a long story. But anyway. So she lives on 64th and Central Park West. That was right near the place. So I went there. I went in her loft. I went up the elevator to the loft. When she came to the door, we would see through outfit on. And that was it. That started the, the beginning of the end for me. <laughs> right. the begin- How about that? The beginning of the How end. How about that? that, that's, that that's a very good um, example of what we were talking about earlier uh, as far as Decisions made in a moment where only what is desired in the moment uh, is considered that can have a far-reaching impact later on. Same decision. No new decision was made. That decision was the one that got you what you wanted then. And, ultimately and got I, you brought what it, you didn't I brought want. it to my mother's house and let my mother meet it. And my mother didn't like it. And I should have took that. That's right. Know, always mother they tell you, so I kick them off so, out yeah, so fast. Should, my mother should've... didn't like it. I don't know what it is, but I she's never went wrong. With my mother, my mother's feelings. So after that, you know, that she used to send somebody to my to where I was staying at because she knew one of the places I was staying at, and they used to come and give me love letters and panties and all type of shit for her because she had wanted me to go to France. Where I, I I had too much shit to go on. I had trying to get this this drug money, drugs for the you know the money to get get the new set of drugs we needed. We needed to be up. So I couldn't, I couldn't go with her. But she yeah, said, that looked crazy. She said the panties to me. She said, you know, she just used to send all love letters to me and stuff like that. Tell me how she, she feel about me and stuff. So, But then I didn't think about that until I started hitting it and, and she started putting her legs in the air like she wanted the, the sperm to go down so she could get pregnant. That's why I like, and my, the white cloud went over my head like, okay, it's time for me to stop this because I ain't trying to get her pregnant. So I broke out. How long I, after you, when you say you broke out, you basically that ended day. your no, interaction? That day. No, I didn't stop the interaction until my girl found out about it. So, okay, so now the situation between you and she is, is deaded. How do you, where were you when you had this interaction with these people, um, Arlene, um, uh, and then the, the Oh, well, before that happened, we have to backtrack a minute because I met Arlene at this, one of Madonna's parties in, in, in South Beach. Okay. And that's when Arlene, you know, gave me that corny ass shit and I went for it. What you mean? What, what, what was it? What was the pit? Uh, she was in the kitchen crying and I went in the kitchen. So I asked her, I said, yo, what's wrong? She was like, oh, I just had many, a lot of problems. So I was like, She's an older lady. I think, you know, she just having problems. So what's wrong? So she was like, I owe some people money. So I was like, who? She said, the, the mafia. So I'm going for all this stupid shit. So I was like, well, why don't you get it from Madonna? Because it's, Madonna don't get involved in nothing that concerns drugs. I'm going for all this, you know, I'm, I feel like kicking myself, but so I said, "How I much mean, you owe?" You live in a movie, you know. Yeah, so she said, "How much you?" I said, "How much you owe?" She said, "Um, I think she said two hundred fifty thousand. I forgot. It's been so long now." So I had fifty thousand in the bag upstairs. So I said, "Listen," she said, "But I, I could get coke for you cheap if 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 you got some money." What you call it? So I was like. No, I don't need nothing right now, but um, I keep that in mind. So I said, um, "What can you? What can we do to try to keep them off before a minute?" Because they talk about killing the daughter. She said. So I said, "She said, just you know, I just need to throw them something." So I had fifty thousand upstairs in the bag. So I, I went upstairs and got that and gave her that. I said, "Here, just you know." She's like, "Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you," and left that shit alone. 
I go back to the party, boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, I'm home. So when I come back home to New York, you know, Harleen keep calling me. And she's like, yo, I got something for you. I got some people I want you to meet. I said, I'm good. I, I didn't need nothing at the time. But when we had the drought, that's when I fell into the trap. And this is why, this is, I already I cut Madonna off now. So I, I said, yo, I said, can you do something? And she's like, yeah, I'm going to have the guy call you. So he called me, and that's when we, I'm talking to the agents. So I show up $120,000 to, to buy a couple, to sample the shits. So they supposed, they're supposed to be guineas. They, 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 yeah, they're they're supposed to be. Supposed to be so I was trying to, I said, let me buy, this is how they play the statue on you. Five to, ten, five to 15 keys is 10 years or better. So I only wanted to buy two at first. But that wouldn't give me no 15, um, um, 10 years. So they said, no, you got to buy five or better. I said, but I didn't know nothing about the laws. And I didn't know that. That's because Don Diva didn't exist yet. And I didn't know, tell niggas about and it. I didn't know about the reverse <laughs> things. I didn't know they could do that. So I was like, I never touched nothing but money. Actually, the day I got busted, if they would have waited, they would have got my crew that would have took the drugs. I was just giving them the money. And then I had my team come with the other van to take the drugs and go. Well, anyway, so they got me. So I was like, all right. I got about five, so all right, let's try it. So I, I, I think I bought, I was supposed to get eight. I get pay for eight, and I get seven on consignment. They, they, they was giving me fifteen all the time, but I would come over one hundred twenty thousand. So now, my my lieutenant, I don't want to say his name because he he's, he's dead now. I want he said the dude I was supposed to drive was sick. Just like Godfather shit. So I said, all right, so me and you, I said, you, me and you go. So I take my loot. He said, he jammed me up too, because I said, he said, uh, we ain't gonna take no guns. We don't even know these motherfuckers. And to so go on the long island. So I said, all right, um, bring a gun. So you hold me down. So this nigga bring two guns. Mm. <laughs> he said, give me a gun too. So I ended up, that's five years more. He just gave me five years, you know, with that stupid shit. So just cause it could have easily been your salvation, though. Yeah. So I got the money in the in the, in the trunk. I pull up in the tofu restaurant, Chinese joint. So it was like, God, um, Scarface. Now the nigga get a dude get in the car. He's not the same white dude I talked to as a Spanish dude. So the conversation goes just like Scarface. You got the money. <laughs> you got the stuff, <laughs> yo. So we go back and forth. So I said. Well, where's the stuff at? He said, it's close by. It's close by. <laughs> the same type of shit. So I get out my car and go get the truck, get my money, and I open up the duffel bag and it's in there. So he said, okay, I'll be right back. Now, he goes to the car. He takes the cap off. That was a signal. Yep. 30 cars for the niggas bump us me. They all had their badges, but see, I don't, I don't know who they are. First, I, I give, I open my shit. I would give a pull out. But that would have been, I think that's seven or eight more. It's more time if you pull it out. But anyway, I'm glad I kept it in my, in my what you call it, in my waist, because I seen it was. Well, my lieutenant, he throws this shit under the seat, so they was trying to give me that one. This, you know, he jammed me up, but he. They, you know, the, the fact that they didn't get it the first time, that's it got thrown out. Because when they searched the car, I mean, they didn't even search the car. They searched the car after the fact. So when they searched the car after the fact, that's when they found the other gun. But it's too late then. Right? They could have put that in there. So the judge didn't take that gun. Mm. But that's how I got knocked off. So you, when you, res well, your sentence took into consideration the drugs that you were intent uh, upon buying, uh, buying That's allegedly, what it comes from. and the gun. 19 years, eight months for the um, the drugs, five years for the gun. Right. So had you, had they made a, a, a thorough search when they initially got you, then- um, I would get charged with two guns. You got charged with both the guns. Yeah, because I got him off the case. He was in- uh, um, How'd you do that? Because he's in MDC- and he's 
he's he's like stressing, like, you know, and, and my people seeing it on the other floors that know me. They say, yo, you better get this nigga off the case. Then he's calling my mother to send money. I told, because I told her, yo, it might call, send him Call some your money. mother to send him money? Yeah, because I told her to send Mike money if he needed for compensate or whatever. But this nigga's calling her every day, yo, I need 500, yo, I need 500. So oh, I called my pressed. I called my mother. I was like, yo. I said, did Mike call you? She said, yeah. But this nigga, he asking for $500 every day. So I, I called him to the gate. I said, yo, what you, um, what you calling my mother for money like that for? Nah, I got to pay for these girls, these girls' bills. I said, oh, hold on, hold on, no, no, no. We ain't got no time for no boss' bills. We dead right now. How do you rely you on Don't be calling for prison. nothing that shit. How? I said, oh, I, mean, I ain't going to send shit to you. But then, what my pay, my people was telling me, yo, he um he looked shaky, so I had the two lawyers call came with me and him, and I told the lawyers, listen, he was just in the car, he don't know nothing, he wasn't on the tapes, he wasn't nothing. I want you, I want I want you to get the case the case dismissed on them and just I I I I I got it to go to trial by myself. He said, yo, they're going to come at you with everything. I said, I don't care. This nigga, this nigga is not built like that. Get him off the case. So and we got him off the case. And, um, so what did that I threatened leave to testify, him in? I threatened to testify on his behalf. Huh? What did that, what, what position that leave him in? It wasn't, uh, uh, okay, y- you don't have nothing to do with this. Go home. What, what did that leave? He, he, he was arrested. He was. Yeah, but he was in the car. They didn't have nothing on him. Right. There was no. So they let no, him go. They let him go because I said threatened to testify. I said, we want a speedy trial. We want him to go to trial first, and I'm going to testify on his behalf. So what happened was, well, he didn't know nothing. So the judges, the, the prosecutors threw the case out on him and just came at me. But I had to do it because if I don't do it, I was worried about him flipping on me. Right. So I ended up doing the whole shit by going to trial by myself. Now, and, and just for clarity, for people who have a hard time uh uh, uh, what do they call it? Comprehending. He did not tell on you. No. You made you. moves to remove him from a position where he might be inclined under the right amount of pressure to tell on you, but it didn't happen. He did not tell on yeah, you. Yeah, he didn't tell on my Did case. not tell. But Mike was, did not tell. My people was telling me he was, he was, he was, um, it, it, didn't, it didn't sound good when talking to him. So they told me, to, yo, you got to do something. So I got him off the case. But he didn't tell. But anyway, after that, I just went to the trials by myself. And, and it went the way it went. And then um, someone was kicking the dead room on me, saying I'm, that I was uh, telling. So, yeah, I remember that. I know. I, I remember so where that I came remember, from. I remember I brought somebody to the um, to the trial. We had somebody come to the trial that did know, and his name was John. I don't know if you met John, Sean John, back in the day, but John came. And um, Murphy Richmond, my lawyer, went over to him. He said, I said, tell, tell, do you tell this guy what's going on? So Murphy said, listen, this is the most stand-up dude I've ever seen in my life. He's, 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 he's fighting for his life. And you guys, he said, tell your friends that they really out of line and not to give him no support because everybody was backing up for me. And I, I'm going to trials. So how I, how how I getting these two hung juries if I'm telling? Right. Common sense. So I'm I'm going to trials, and then you know D and them got the word, and they was like, tell them you know we love them. We just wanted to make sure. But my thing is this, you know, me. Well, everybody's different, but me, I I I am still going to be there until I I see something shaky. But there was nothing shaky in me. But I guess they felt you know. 20 something years, you know, he was, I wasn't, I had a girl I was caring about at the time, another girl I met. So I was like, I ain't wanna lose her. But I cut her off too because she was an airline stewardess and she, um, she was crying every time she comes see me. I didn't want to go through that. I don't like doing beers with girls because it's too much headaches. Absolutely. You, can, you can't, so, I mean, it's, I do it on it's my difficult own. enough to manage, you know, that kind of dynamic when you're on the street. Imagine trying to, do that from a position not being able to move, having no liberty. That, that's you setting yourself up for going crazy. 
Um, the, uh, the, 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 the party, the party thing, as big as the drug thing and the street thing was in your life, I would say the party thing, especially as far as the public is concerned, the party thing was just as fucking big. You were a huge party promoter in a major city in New York. Being a major party promoter in New York City, even today, that's that's a that's some that shit. Was, that's that a was big another, deal. That's another way to wash our money. So I was doing the parties, and um, I mean, people say nobody ever threw a party like me, but I mean, everybody's parties have room for improvement. Every every that's party right. had, but my parties was mostly. I try to do mostly dress up, you know. Now they're doing parties. You come as you are, but that's not my type of party. Matter of fact, we did one in two um, nineteen. Did you come to that one? We did two nineteen in um, the casino, right uh, before no, they had the uh, pandemic. Uh, 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 that was uh, that uh, was uh, they, return to uh, the map. Who hit me? Uh, my cousin Tony was there, right? Yeah, Tony was there. They they hit me, but I was somewhere. I was out of pocket. Return of the Mac. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I saw everybody. D and them came. It was. It was dope to see everybody together like that. Another one of our people, Mustafa. That's my dude too. I hey, forgot Mustafa. to just give him a shout out. You know, my man Will Blast and his brother Wolf. They, they cool with me too. So they always. You know, we had the big party and everybody came and. You know, it was a. It was a flashback. Me and D caught a flashback with like how we used to do it. Yeah. Even when we went to eat, it was like, damn, this shit remind me of back in the day. Mm -hmm. But we had um Big Joe and them and there. All you know, all them dudes was everybody came. It was a good, a nice party and um It looked like it. I saw a lot of the video footage, man. Yes, yeah, beautiful. Danny women. was there, beautiful everybody. Women, yeah, it was it was a lot of smiles. And 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 I know the smiles were genuine too. And I did you know that with mean? Kevin Childs. Shout out to Kev, shout out to Chris Woods. That's my little uh, little brother, and shout out to Roper Dope. So we did a party together, and um, it came out fabulous. So we had like close to twenty five hundred people in there. Oh, that's crazy! And we used to support they, the the casino wanted us to do one every month, but that's when the pandemic came. Right. So everything got shut down because I was just doing it for that one time, but they wanted to do it every month. They wanted us and to that, do it every month. But you're talking about now, two thousand nineteen. Right. And. When you started the party thing back then, was the How that initial, came about? The initial yeah, one? was that about? Was that initially? Oh, we need a way to wash the money, or was that just something that just kind of happened? Well, it was my birthday coming up, right? You know, you know, you know, a lot of these dudes out here now. This is crazy. They claim they they big time drug dealers. They had two blocks in New York. We was everywhere all right, over the United right, States. Right, right. So we had blocks everywhere. People. That's why it distinguishes us from different people. And and so people understand, having blocks means having a place in a city where or, or town where you have a, 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 a an area, an address, you know, where you have your drug operation, you got your crew, whatever you sell. Yeah, but we don't crew. take pictures. We don't right. brag about it. It's something we do. And how we conquer an area, say I want to go to um, Baltimore. I find somebody in Baltimore that's cool out there, and I give him an offer he can't refuse because he's going to make crazy money with us. He ain't got to put up no money. So now, boom, they talked me into We could do a party for your birthday. I said, all right, fine. Formal, the formal joint. Yeah, that was the first one, Omni Hotel. The ballroom. Yeah, so we had Key Sweat performing and In Touch performing. So, about 2,000 people, right? Over 2,000. Yeah. And then... Um, after that, they was like, oh, because my my rule was, for, in order for me to have this party, y'all got to finish everything that's in your states. So they was like, shit, that ain't a party. So they, 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 they doubled up their t the time that they was out there and finished everything off. But anyway, make a long story short, we get back. After the party, everybody had fun, and it was like, yo, let's do this, um, Peter, let's do this once a month. It'd be a center. I said, yo, you think you're slick. You're trapping me off now. <laughs> but I'm going to tell y'all, we're going to do it because, you know, y'all did good on this on this, this trip with the with the drugs we sent. But, you know, DNA was like, yo, as long as they finishing everything up, you know, we might as well 
have something every month. I don't care, you know, because they don't, you know, he don't really like socialize like that. But he said, yeah, I'll come out every month. I said, all right, do you want to come out? And Knight said, he want to come out. And Cool said, you know, but like I said, Cool only come out special joints. Cool's a young man, younger than us, but he's an old man mentally. Like he wants, he, 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 it wasn't his thing. He better be home with the family, which is better. Smart guy. Which is better. Shout out to Cool. He's taking a lot of risks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's better. So you know anyway, I mean? so we, we start doing it once a month or whatever. Somebody's birthday come up. We did one for Cool's birthday, Knight's birthday. New Year's Eve, you know, start, we're just picking days to throw them shits, you know. And you had, you had people performing that were you had hot, people hot performing. topics. You had, you had Comedians. Mary, you, had, you, had, you had Mary J. You yeah, had Mary J. Did you had Jodeci. Yes, Keith Sweat. Yep, Keith um, Sweat. And, and people it, was it performing was, it, our parties. They didn't even know we was behind it. That's how, that's how crazy it was. We did, you know, we just, just have the party, have everybody promote it, and then they just come and perform. So it was... It was fun. Were there instances, I, I, I heard that there were instances where these people, they were paying for the opportunity to perform at your, your events. No, I never did that. No? No. That, would, that's, that would be, I was that's like, that's crazy as hell. That's a myth. I, I would never even put that on nobody, but, you know, we paid them good money to perform. Right. And we had all the top DJs. I had, I had um, Capri, who's a beast, that had, would they would Ready they perform learn. for free? No, I paid them. I paid all the DJs. Capri, talking about the the art the uh, the artists. Did no, we paid them too. We paid them. I'm not going. That's right. S- say that. That was just somebody insinuating that mm-hmm. the parties are so hot. You heard it. You heard it. You have heard it. We all we all heard it. Nah, we oh, paid. We paid. Well, and then um, we had um, Red Alert, Flex. What about Suge? Ace. What Suge? What what, what Suge Knight? What um. Then he do. Then he have like a little showcase of some of his artists performing. Yeah, that show. that was Chaz. Mainly Chaz put that together. So they didn't. Um, it was always it was a problem because it wasn't it wasn't Snoop Dogg's and, and um, Dr. Dre's fault. But under the clause, they were supposed to um, perform by one o'clock. So what happened? Um, I couldn't even get in in the beginning. It was so crowded out there. That was Chaz's first big event he threw out there, so he did it. He did it. He did it good because he he put, I think, thirty five hundred four thousand people in there. But what he his, his, he had a secure team out there with Rockwallers, so niggas getting bit and everything. So I was like, yeah. I said, <laughs> no, yeah. literally, he they literally had Rockwallers. Yeah, out there? I, I, it's hard for me to get in. Niggas was scared. To, it was crazy. But when I finally got in, and shout out to my man Rufus and them. Um, I um, you know, we had paid this man forty, it was forty thousand for them niggas to perform at the time. So they had tried to leave, and they was like, they don't want to pay. I mean, they don't, they they not performing because the clause said they supposed to perform early. It's like three or four in the morning now. So we had to go to them, cut them off, and you know, had to talk to them. And you know, they what was that conversation like? Well, they were staying, they ain't gonna perform. And what were so, we all had, you know, they had to get Shirt Knight on the phone, and I, it was going back and forth. So the phone was grabbed and said, yo, if they don't perform, you ain't going to see your artists no more. You're going to need new artists. So they perform. Yeah, they're not, they're not going to make it out of New York. Yeah, they're they not going to. They perform. So after that, you know, you know, it was like um, that's how we became cool with Shirt Knight. And that's how he wanted us to do the East Coast Death See, they had the assumption that, the, see in the West Coast, the strength, the um, the vapors, some of them was real gangsters, but in the East Coast, our vapors was vapors. Like he was talking about the vapors earlier, mm-hmm. and the the thing that was was so West Coast thought that the East Coast was soft because our vapors was representing us. So they 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 barking on our vap our vapors and stuff. Thinking and, that they they contended with real and they not they not, they wasn't the real dudes <laughs> they was the ones that copy everything we was doing and stuff at that time. So That's right. when he when he got with D and Prem and me and um Chaz and the rest of us, you know, the real dudes, then you know, they kind of realized that we not them. We a whole different breed, and we get busy. So we came to a mutual, you know. 
thing where um, Eric B and um, like the MC Hammer was involved. They were trying to get get the East Coast thing done, and Big D was you know really orchestrating that with the um, the uh, Death Row East yeah. situation. Yeah. Big D was or orchestrating that, but you know he was keeping me updated. Cause I said, all of us don't need to be there. You know, you run it. You run this shit. This is your show. So D, D, you know, D, D's very good when it comes to getting a deal done. So he, um, he had the shit orchestrated. But then I went to jail. Shook Knight went to jail, and shit. Everything fell through. Yeah. So that was that was it. Um, Shook Knight talk talks to us now. He talks to D. Yeah. I, I, Shout I, out to Shook Knight. I haven't, uh, I haven't seen Suge or had any communication, direct communication with him since uh, since Meech was home. Meech came home? No, when Meech, when Meech was home. Oh, I before, thought you said Meech because I Meech never heard it. I didn't hear he came home. But um, I never met Meech either, though. Yeah, your, your paths uh, uh, yeah. didn't intersect. Yeah. It was only a small window. Um, So... We were talking earlier about Keith Sweat and, uh, you know, you know, there was an incident that occurred that we were talking about earlier um, with the, uh, a certain individual that most people would, would know the name of, um, Street Cat, who had a tendency to um, go real hard about abroad. You know, you were talking about, you know, having uh, rules within the crew where it's like, okay, my girl is off limits, but any other girl that I might be interacting with, I mean, sh shoot your shot. If you hit your, if you hit your mark, you hit your mark. But this dude was, uh, he was kind of taking a lot of broads, like you know, as his broad. You know what I mean? And so Keith uh, shot a shot at at the broad, right, at the rucker, and then dude turns around and smacks Keith at the uh, at the rucker. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too sure which girl it was. You know, Alpo. That's Alpo, and Alpo was younger than us. You know, he was he was closer to D than me, but we was I and um at the time. And um, um, I got a call on my man, and he was like, "Yo, some dude just slapped slapped Keith." I said, "Who?" So I don't really know his name. So I said. I made a couple of calls. They said, yo, the kid, Alpo slapped him. I said, where Alpo at now? And he told me, and I went down there, and I, I stepped to him, and I told him, yo, don't, don't touch Keith. He's off limits. And he said, all right. You know, he went with You know, because I don't talk about nobody bad, especially when they dead. And the rat thing, I'm not going to bring up about him because, you know, it's out there. It was always out there, and, you know, like I said, I don't like talking about Vass unless I'm going to talk about Organum. But before he became that, he was cool with us. It's mm -hmm. nothing, you know. Yeah. D, he was real close to D because, you know, D, D, D's like the mayor. Everybody yeah. everybody goes through D to talk to us because D is like, he's the, he's the, he's the one of the most dangerous, but he's the most humblest too. So I, that's how you, you have to describe him. Yeah. But he is, he's such a good dude, but he's a businessman. So he draws a lot of attention. And even when we used to go to these parties, you know, after the party, D got about 30, 40 people coming to breakfast, which I don't know none of these motherfuckers. He's talking about, and you know, I said, all right, cool. But then when the check come, me and him got split the check. Yep. I was like, yo, hold up, man. I don't even know these people. He said, hey, you know, this is, this. we do this all the time. Yep. You know, so he had me spending money recklessly. So anyway. <laughs> So I, I hollered at Poe and I told him what's up. I said, yo, you know, he said he understood. And then so people might take it, you know, that he was scared. And he wasn't scared. He's just that he respected us. Because he understood. He understood, he understood how the game. Work. And he know, he know, you know, he know how big we was. See, and he ain't with no problems with us. And, you know, I just went, I just went there because I didn't want Keith to get slapped again. But, you know, but my thing is this. It, it, it really is my man artist. So I was like, you know, just doing a favor. But yeah, that happened. And and Demencio. Demencio was also cat. Demencio did parties, right? 
Um, he's like he, he, he might have fa- a special he did, party, but right? He's right. Not a party his promoter. his thing was the fashion. I remember we yeah. until to do the fashion. With Miguel, show. he was fucking with Miguel and yeah. everything. And um, uh, again, over a girl, uh, out of his own mouth, uh, Alpo killed him over a girl. Well, that was um. The Messi used to mess with the girl before Alpo, right? So I don't know if people knew that, and. Demencio, Demencio slept and he wasn't supposed to sleep. Because Alpo and he talked to him on the phone and said, everything's good, nothing's no problem. And Demencio, Demencio didn't have his, his, his soldiers with him at the game in D.C. I can't understand that part. And that's how he got set, he trapped off. You know, and you, y'all know who did that. And um, after that, Poe was trying to, shoot up to New York so nobody know that he had something to do with it but everybody found out he had something to do with that shit mm-hmm. so yeah, then, that's why that's why he admitted it then it was, everybody knew then it was on and popping for him but you know um, he was supposed to be got at the Rocket game but he sensed it I think he had a gold electric coupe at the time he sensed the drop the tent yeah, he the sensed gold, the, the gold, it was no a sedan the gold legend sedan that's what it was. I know. Yeah, because he tried to sell it to me. Lexus. It was a Lexus. Right? Oh, the Lexus Coupe. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. That's yes, what yes, he yes, was yes, in, the yes, Lexus right. Coupe. So what he tried to do. He I did mean, try when, to sell when, me gold legend, though. It was nice. It was set up for him to get it the same way he got Demencio. He sensed it and he broke out. So nobody never seen him again. Then he got arrested. So right after that, but, you know, it's, it's shit happens, you know, and then. I went to Demencio's funeral and we had, we had to wear wigs and everything, go to Demencio's funeral because um all the majors, Agent Cologne and all them, yeah. they all was outside. Did you ever come into contact with go ahead and finish what you're saying? With Cologne? Yeah. Yeah. She came right after I got arrested, she came down there. She said, We finally got you. I enjoyed your parties. She ain't know she was never at a party that fat pieces. Yeah, she wasn't at my parties, and I, I, I t- I've told people how she was pulling cats out their cars, yeah, taking their shit, taking she, their cars from them. She pulled yeah, me. Tell your grandmother to come down, get this seventy five thousand dollars BMW she got on the social yeah, security. She's a piece of shit. I hope she, hope she, something happened to her too. 